August 19th, 7 p.m. And our first item of business uh, tonight is the continuation of the hearing to reopen the special permit docket 2911 at 319 Broadway, uh, the Common Ground Restaurant. Um, as you might recall, uh, we discussed this uh, quite a bit at the last meeting. Uh, we had public comment lasting over, uh, I think, an hour and a half. Uh, and uh, we uh, continued it uh, so that the applicant could come back uh, with uh, some different things that the board had uh, uh, requested uh, in order for it to uh, make a sound judgment. Um, since that time, we've received different materials from the applicant. And uh, before I bring the applicant up there, up here, I should say, um, to kind of present some of these things, I would like to point out that we had an initial plan or what was termed a final plan on Friday that was distributed to the board and then that seems to have uh, changed uh, fairly soon before the meeting at uh, uh, about 3 o'clock today, uh, Carol was able to send us a new plan, interior plan with new numbers on uh, folks uh, or seats that, that are being requested. So I'm going to bring the applicant up now, but um, just for the board, uh, for maybe a discussion with the board, um, I think as far as the late plan is concerned, um, and we can talk to the applicant about it, but uh, uh, my thoughts are, uh, and uh, we'll hear out a few of the things, is that I don't think that we've had enough time to digest the new plan, um, and that with respect to parking and the seating, uh, the seating and the parking that goes along with it, um, my inclination is to uh, continue uh, to the next meeting that portion. Now, we can discuss among ourselves whether we think it's uh, efficient, since we do have time on the agenda tonight, to talk about uh, filtration, uh, soundproofing, uh, and um, I believe there was hours of operation and employee schedule uh, were three other pieces that we had asked for some information on. Um, so that would be my inclination uh, up front. Um, I don't think that the changing in the different pieces, I, I personally don't feel like I've had enough time to digest it, and, um, and, and I'm not uh, quite ready to talk about it. If the board feels otherwise, um, then I'm happy to uh, discuss it, but that's, that's my inclination of that. So. Can I start to say the only reason why it's changed at the last minute is because Michael Burns of the, uh, the building department, his specs he gave to us in the reason why we had it on Friday, he missed, he gave us a miss amount of, uh, of the specs and he rearranged, he told, told us on today. And with that, it was able to increase the front. Okay. But that's one of the reasons why it was changed because I mean, yeah. this uh, communication on that, on that part that he gave us information. So with that change, it's actually decreased from the original plan and it's only a difference of three parking spaces. Right. And, and, and from, uh, from what it was. Right. And I understand um, circumstances, et cetera. But, but I'll just point out as just a matter of fact, you've got 94 seats in the back house showing on this plan, mm -hmm. uh, or at least you're adding up to 94 and you've only got 90 showing. So I, I really feel like this is not fully baked at this point, and I really feel like that, you know I understand you felt the time crunch to do it. Yeah, but I, it's just become a financial issue now that it's becoming that each time it gets lapsed off, it's costing me ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I and mean, it's becoming a point where I'm going to start losing the actual work, and mm -hmm. also the timeline on building this stuff out is going to be pushed back another few more months because now they're going to put other jobs up on it, and it's becoming the issue where. If I can continue or not, because the fact is that the times it is. I just want to point out to the papers in the back, just to address your point, Michael, is that there are those foldable collapsing materials. Yeah. But, um, so they, 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 they move around, they can be set up in any different configuration. Um, she has been showing tables of six here. Mm -hmm. um, there are four off. But, you know, 
type of demo they would just squeeze four more people into them or if we had yeah just do it as 90. It's showing 90, just change it to 90. Um, but the plan we originally came in at was big ball. Mr. Chairman, pardon the interruption, but might we have the fan off while we're while we're discussing new material? It's very hard to hear the voices that are projecting away from us. That's fine. Carol, yeah. thank you. Yep. We, we came in originally 228. Um, mm -hmm. The board did ask uh, Mr. O'Gwin to look to decreasing the seating capacity of the restaurant. Um, he's down as of this afternoon down to the 200, so he's cut. 28 seats out, um, and he was just he was specifically asked to look at the back. So he has cut out uh, 18, I think we're at 118, 14. 114, or 14 in the back. No, one out, no, 108, we cut eight. out 14 people. Yeah, and he cut down the front of the house as well. So he, he's cut out a total of 28 in order to one bring it into compliance with the, the zoning. Um, excuse me, the building codes, but also to decrease the need for parking and any um, negative act impact that may or may not have been perceived in the neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> I, I know we got this to you late today, but I would ask the board to not continue it um, because the configuration of the interior, I don't believe the configuration is within this board's purview. The total number of seats is. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, as as it yeah correct yes the total number of seats is and he's putting forth here 200 if you have a, an issue with it showing 90 and you know, 96 he'll he'll cut it down to 90 to limit the back at that just so we can move forward it's willing to do that um, but I would want to go forward today and, and not continue because we're scheduled we will be scheduled by the end of this evening to go in front of the selectmen on. Uh, September 9th, and they want a written opinion of this board before they'll move, which, um, before they'll hear us. Um, I don't know if that's the normal standard or not. Um, and that being said, I think we can address all the other issues and then parking. Uh, we had the tax study, and he did get a report and an analysis from Howard Stein, which was circulated last week to you guys which shows that there is capacity for 185, and if we're adding four, three or four additional parking spaces, I believe within those two reports, there's still capacity for those additional four spots within the 1,000-foot radius, as called the bylaws. Bruce? Yeah. Um, John, I agree with you. It doesn't, uh, I don't think it's really within the board's purview about where the seats are located inside the establishment. Mm -hmm. But we are concerned about the total number of seats Correct. and how that impacts the parking. Um, and it is confusing when earlier, this, you know, as of Thursday or Friday, we were down to 185 mm -hmm. and we're going back up to 200, mm -hmm. and the parking study. Uh, that was submitted was based on a 185 total seat count. Yes. And we can get into the details of the parking study in just a second, but um, as I read the study, there were times where there was sufficient capacity within the 1,000-foot radius and other times where there may not have been capacity or you were bumping up very close to the, to the, to the capacity level, specifically Saturday mornings, and I bear in mind the comment of the author of the study that that read time is at 11 a.m., which is not really the main operating hour of the restaurant, which is going to be more mm -hmm. around the 1 o'clock time frame, and there could be some difference on that. But even so, I think that's where, if I can speak for Mike for just a second, it's difficult for the board to know until you tell us exactly how many seats we're looking at, and which plan we're looking at, which one is operative, and whether or not the parking study is still relevant if we're going above 185 seats. And I'll also add to that that you know the the other part of this is understanding that that the building enforcement officer is okay mm -hmm. with the number of seats and how it's done, and I don't think we have that at this point. So, 
I don't know if you spoke with Carol or not this afternoon. I spoke with him after I circulated his plan. Because he's the one who came back to us with it. And I, yes, yeah. I understand. Mm. But, you know, we've had two weeks here. Uh, well, and so, so the, the problem becomes is we've got nothing in front of us. Saying that 200 is okay, that 185 is okay. Well, well, frankly, he told me he never sends written opinions. We to can the ask for we can ask for him if if it's a concern. We can yeah. ask for his opinion, and we have not received that opinion because it's been moving. Well, I can't speak to whether or not he had any conversations this afternoon or not, or whether he's given any thumbs up or not. I don't know if the gentleman did. Agreed. But, yeah. But I don't know if Carol just spoke to him and all this afternoon. The last time I spoke with the building inspector, he said he still needed time to review what he had most recently been provided with. That was late this afternoon. That's right. Right. Well, he fixes on this and agrees to go with 90 in the back. And the building inspector. We, like Mr. Burns put it to me, is it's always provided it's within conformance with the building laws, providing he has built. Agreed. He agrees, yeah. So. He wants us to make it conditional. If you make it conditional. Which the selectmen always do as well, conditioned upon final approval of the building department and, and, and the health department. Like I can't obviously direct him or give him any no indication and I'm not, to give it a written opinion. I can ask, but I'm not asking. Yeah. What we're asking for him is, and which is part. If you look at the bylaw, mm -hmm. you're to provide him with copies of it so that he can recommend or provide his, you know, professional opinion on what it is, and and that's what we've asked for. And to date, we have not received that because the plan keeps on changing. I, okay, but part of it is, is, is this is at 3 o'clock, we've had um, a new set of plans. Mm -hmm. This is the at least third, maybe fourth set of plans, which, granted, we did ask to go back and change it, so fair enough. The problem becomes is that it's been moving, and this has a ripple effect. It has a ripple effect on the application that was provided and the number of spaces that are being requested, it has different ripple effects going all the way through. Um, and it just, and actually I'll ask for other comments from, from board members as far as uh, their opinions on moving forward or on the information in front of you. Can um, I just say one little thing? Um, as of today, he was talking to the engineer, my architect, and he's went back to them and said, oh, there's a problem with what I gave you. And that's why they changed it. And he told her that he was okay with the plan that she handed him. And that's why I called him, uh, John, to confirm that he was talking to you guys. And from my understanding, he was communicating. But again, I, I can't honestly say if he was or wasn't, but according to me, he okayed it. And that's one of the reasons why we moved forward in it and, and sent you guys the plans in the first place. Other than that, I wouldn't have sent them. And uh, we did change them because of the fact of what he told us to do in the sense of moving the aisles and stuff. And when he came back to us today, he came back to uh, our dad before he even talked to me, um, to any, any of us, he told her, and she's the one who contacted me to go change. So that's the reason why he's been moving on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And But last I heard is he did okay. So well, I don't know what else to say. And we would have stuck with the 185, we would have on. Yeah, and even, yeah. if that was the only requirement again, but now that he gives us the freedom to Increase the front of it and decrease the back. That was more of our aim. If, if, if you're willing to lock the back in at 90 instead of 96, 94. 94. That's why right. my eyes are going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, he had, she had um, um, oh, 96 and yes. the front and 94 in the back. Right. So you're, you're cutting out four additional seats yes. and he's willing to. So that's lock that down and agree to that as part of his um, that special permit, and that would fix your parking at do the math. We need uh, 49 spots instead of 50, right? 
Mm -hmm. um, and that would only be an increase of two spots. Okay. Oh, three spots over the Friday. Mm -hmm. This Friday you had up one because of the plenty math. Because uh, 185, I figured this the way it worked out, I added one additional spot. Four. Yes, it would be 49 spots as opposed to 37. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That's the issue. I'm trying to do math. Yeah, this is the issue. It comes up to being 49 spots. Yeah, 49 yes, spots total. Yeah. 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 You've got to be there on the 9th. Yes. Yeah. And they won't accept that until they get from you guys a rent and right. So what I'm wondering is if there's a compromise here where we get a, if we arrange a meeting that's either following Monday or whatever that allows us to straighten out all this sort of things. Um, still have time for We've got Labor Day. Yeah. And... We've got next Monday. I mean, I the second is not a, not a meeting. That's that's Labor Day. Labor Day. And the week, yeah. and next Monday is the twenty sixth. Correct. Correct. I'm just asking. I'm, I, I'm not here. I'm You're not here. here. Okay. I may not be here. Yeah. On yeah. uh, next I Monday. I think that's problematic. Okay. Um, the one thing we might be able to do is. Would people be able to meet a little bit earlier? Could, uh, I want that on the night. But the, uh, the, the problem with the board is we would meet earlier. They, 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 they push it back for that reason for the long. No, I understand, but you'd either have it or you wouldn't. Is my point. I don't get what you're saying. You either have what this meeting or not. If you schedule the other one. If you schedule the other, they're, they're going to push back for at least another couple weeks. So um, um, they told me they wanted a written decision before they schedule. So they'll schedule me okay. a written decision, and I asked me, um, it's all of if that was standard, or if it's possible for this board to actually go ahead and get a decision written in those couple of weeks, or if it's something that usually takes you have to write it and you have to meet again and vote on it. And, yeah, I'm mean, a little bit surprised that they're requiring all of that, but that's their board, not ours, mm -hmm. so I can't really speak for it. Um, thoughts, Chris? One thought that might be helpful is if we could maybe talk about the parking study and figure out what the number of available spaces are in the thousand foot catchment area. And reverse engineer this and figure out, okay, how many parking spaces are, therefore, how many seats could you have at the restaurant? And, you know, as John put it, I don't think we particularly care how many are in the front or in the back. That is something that the building inspector and the fire chief may care about. But at least we'd be working with an agreed upon number of how many parking spaces are really available in the Russell Common lot, the railroad lot, and the other public parking spaces, and see how close we get to your number. Um, I'm still struggling with parts of the Howard Stein Hudson report, but maybe you can shed some walk, walk us through that, John, and shed some light on what you think it says. Maybe we should just discuss everything at least and then see what we're coming okay. Oh, yeah. And then make that, a decision. Yeah, okay. So yeah. that was yeah. one yeah. idea. The board, yeah. I did not want to have the board feel like they were being rushed into any of it. So if everyone feels comfortable, because we're just talking about the seats, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, essentially, then I'm fine with starting the discussion. I just didn't want mm -hmm. folks to feel put upon because of the last minute nature of it. Yeah, so but, but uh, I've asked Christine to agree with Andy. Yeah, then I don't want to proceed. Christine, do you I'm want to proceed I'm fine with, talk about? with proceeding. You know, we already have yeah. some traffic counts, and we already right. know the situation. Okay. You know, Saturday midday, as you suggested, is, is the worst time. And we already know that's the worst time, and I don't right. know if we can reverse engineer it here today, Any, but we else? can talk it through at least. Mm -hmm. Andrew? I'd agree with that. Okay. Andy? Okay. All right, gentlemen, let's talk it through. So the first thing is the parking study, yeah. if you want to take that down. Um, when we first started, we, we located the TAC report from May 20th of 2013, where they essentially did a study themselves of the available spaces within the center, but they also included, which was beyond our thousand feet, the uh, library, 
and the entire railroad parking lot. Um, but they didn't do on the tax report was going the other direction. They were concerned with the, um, the center parking areas. Um, they got into quite a lot of detail. The other thing they did not discuss was the permit permitting for the permit parking. The permit parking um, determined from the treasurer's office, who is the permitting authority for parking spaces in the Russell Common. Uh, those are daytime spots, uh, 8 in the morning through 6 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Sunday, uh, the permits don't apply. They also issue permits from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. Um, but those, again, were irrelevant to our our case because of the, the time frame is beyond the time of the restaurant. So um, with that TAC report, I, Mr. O'Gwin contacted the Howard Stein folks. My puppy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Where, where they did go to full thousand feet and of both both sides of the restaurant um, extended down Broadway another distance to make it a thousand feet and they gave you a circular map which I wanted to print out in color but I'm not a print, color printer in my office um, in that they also showed all the restricted unrestricted the one hour meter the two hours and it goes down quite far down the Massachusetts Avenue and And that, good, comparing the two circles between the tax study and this study, it goes several hundred feet, I think, further down Mass Ave towards East Arlington. And they capture in quite a lot of different on-street parking, all of which is unregulated, um, besides for the standard one-hour, not metered parking with the guy walking around with the chalk. But as I look at their report, the only time um, they do find any utilization is in the mid-Saturday afternoon and one hour right around 6 o'clock before the Russell Common lots open. And once the Russell Common lots become un- Unregulated, it, it opens up a good. Um, I get the exact number. Was it 123 permanent spaces? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I drove by Russell Common the other last Saturday at about six o'clock. It was two thirds empty, so you had my seat of the pants look at it as well. What time was that? At about 6:30. On Saturday. Yeah, but it's in the middle of summer. Mm. Um, well, the, the, the railroad app is a lot behind the in my building. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on how you interpret the capture area. Does it include the whole parking lot because it's um, one of its entrances and a portion of it is, or is it just the portion that's in the circle um, of the thousand foot radius. I, mean, I can't answer that. I don't know if anyone's ever litigated that yeah. particular point. Well, based on this, he said it's a tough price. Oh, well, yeah. He, but, I mean, he says that if that was considered, it would be ample enough parking. Right. That's what I'm saying. If they it's capture that because of the entrance, yes. there's ample parking. There's also ample parking going down as far as um, Chestnut Street. and. I said back towards East Arlington. So his, you know, his summaries, his bottom line was he found that there was park capacity for the 15 additional Medford Street. The only time he found real capacity overload was during Franklin Saturday afternoon when and the Sunday morning church times when they double parking.
assume the entire railroad act. He assumes the entire railroad act is included. Parking study and looking through it. The, the analysis that you guys looked yeah, at. The yeah, the HNS. The the only issue I have with this whole parking study is that it's we don't have a study yet, and it's not by your fault. Mm. You know, TAC TAC did this and looked at two days, two specific days, two at, spe days. at spe two random days at specific times in the same month. Mm -hmm. It's such a tiny, tiny sample of what could be happening in that area. And I know it's all you had to go on at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, did you pursue pulling all the permits and seeing what was permitted, what wasn't? That, no, that's that when I spoke it? to the... Um, that's when this study came up? No, I when I spoke to the treasurer's office who issues the permits. Oh, you mean the permits for the different restaurants? Yeah, we, when we left last time, you were going to pull Let's all see. those permits, which was going to be well, a even, yeah, I, horrible job. I, I did, and I just did consider it, but then I also spoke with the selectman's office, and a, a lot of the restaurants do not require special permits. Um, such as Dingo doesn't require a special permit. Uh, so they their seating wouldn't be reflected anywhere on the town records. Uh, they were just, they were able to do what they did as of right once they got the permission to extend the selectman seating and the, par the parking that goes with it mm -hmm. isn't regulated by anybody within the town. So that's even less documented than this is? It's not documented looking at all. At, looking at parking counts on different days is probably the best way to get an idea. Mm, I think it's the only way because of the, you know, this, how many restaurants in Arlington Center, and, you know, good, only a few of them are actually regulated by this board. What I did like about what was done in this analysis was that um, there were a few recommendations of what could be done to alleviate parking in general in the center, mm -hmm. not just for your restaurant, but for the entire center. And I think if we can maybe focus on those instead of the particular numbers, because the numbers are kind of, they're relevant, but they're not because of the small sample. Mm -hmm. You know, they're relevant in showing that on these particular days, this is what would have happened that Saturday midday you'd be at 170, 107% capacity. So, you know, some of the suggestions were to open up the permit parking on Saturday to the general public. And that would help alleviate your Well, the, most of those issue. permit parking, if, if I may, are issued to Arlington Catholic School, who buys the spaces for the, the academic year, they're going to buy the spaces every month, and then they resell them to the students. You know, 90% and 95% of the students are from out of town. Um, so they drive in, they buy the spots from the school on a lottery basis. So it varies the amount of spaces they buy year to year, if not month to month. Mm -hmm. They told me month to month. The engineer looked into it and he goes, some months it might be. 90 spots taken up other months might be only 25 and other ones are you know it could be 130 so you know it depends what time of year as well too but if you extrapolate that kids get out of school at 215 off they go unless they're there for uh, academic reasons after school sporting events uh, club activities so those can make assumptions which no one can base anything on they're not there set the majority of the space is clear out after 2.15 bell. Yeah, it's, right now it's only a 66% capacity when you're at 107% mm -hmm. overall, so attacking that lot seems to be the way to increase parking in general. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you could fit another 28 cars in there at 66%. Yeah. 
if it's only 66 percent capacity and you know well that's that which way beyond this board of bobs that would require a bylaw change right. yeah yeah and that's unless you guys want to go ahead and change the bylaws next spring <laughs> So the parking at that lot is a bylaw right now. It's a bylaw, yeah. Um, and in that bylaw, they can fluctuate. Mm -hmm. They always have so many permanent spaces, but they're not always used. Correct. That no, fluctuates actually, it and says that there's, um, They always have 165, set, though. It doesn't set the amount of spaces that are... It just says the times. Oh, they always have 123 permitted spaces, right? That's the number, not 165. No matter what, but they give out permits to the students, sometimes 20, sometimes all. Sometimes 123, 90. sometimes yeah. 90. And those C students that exist at 6 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when the parking study is actually done next year, that suggestion to look at that utilization, I think, was a very sound one. And we may find that change in the bylaw is the way if there's no money for a parking garage right now, then that's the temporary yeah, fix, maybe. There's a few coming out of the master plan as well. So it wouldn't be the only one I'm sure coming out of the Right. So. so there's potentially capacity in that, in that respect. The other, th the other item that you guys touched on in this as a recommendation was to um, look at some of the private lots. Playtime was one. Have you had any conversations with them to see if that's even a possibility? I have tried to track down the owners. Yeah. There's some folks in Newton who have unlisted phone numbers. We talked to, talk to Greg, who owns a coffee shop across the street. He says he has a few spots. Um, in Java, Greg Moscato, who I've had discussions with. He was going to call Bob to find out what the, if there was going to be any charge. Or if he, he was very excited about having this restaurant come in. and. He said he has 35 spaces, which frankly I don't see 35 spaces in that lot. But he closes, he said anywhere from 5 to 7, depending on how he feels that day. And would make some sort of arrangement if we wanted to. And Bob, I contacted him twice. And he's contacting me more back and going, I've been kind of busy, sorry, I'll get back to you. And I'm like, all right, let's go try to track him down. He was positive, but again, I don't know what I don't know what kind of yeah. Yeah. I didn't know if he wanted to have a um, rent the spaces from him or just volunteer to give them to him at night time or he had no arrangement being able to make, which is what he wanted to talk about. Yeah. Because that lot is currently at ninety nine percent utilization, not mm -hmm. counting the permit because you can't touch the permit parking on Saturday at eleven o'clock. And I know your peak, you said, was at 1 o'clock. So maybe by 1 o'clock that oh, yeah. percentage yeah. would go down, but maybe it would go up. Right. It all depends on what's going on in the center and right. I, what yeah. time of year it is, whether it's Christmas shopping time yeah. or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's also on a Saturday, and my thing is Saturday 1 o'clock at noon, most restaurants aren't going to be peaking any time there until like 6, 7 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do. I would hope that would be completely packed, but uh, you know, like you would that. I'd be happy if I had 20% of the capacity at that time. Yeah. Playtime is open on Saturday, so. Yeah. That, yeah so at that time, it's probably their highest utilization they, they time. They close too. at like, it was 6 o'clock. Yeah, it's I looked up their hours. They close at 6 or 6 on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Like they Thursday. Yeah. yeah. But that, you know, Saturday is the issue and they're open. Yeah, at that time on yeah, Saturday. They, they, so unless they have extra spaces consistently, that's something you would need to find out whether see, that is even an option even to help. the gym and Java or playtime would only be guaranteed spaces at night after they close. If, 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 during the, even if they work out. Yeah, if we work something out, if they were willing to do this. It would only be at night. So that's not going to help your midday. Saturday midday. No. So depending on how we're going to rule on the railroad lot, if we even can figure that out, whether well, I don't think we're ruling on it necessarily, I think we're whether it counts, we you, you know, also and everyone can have their opinion have on Have the that. spaces running down Mass Ave on the opposite on way. the opposite direction, which yeah. aren't counted in the tax study. Right, and it looks like that's about you're doubling the spaces that would be out of the top part of the study. You're taking out some from the top, 
and you're adding some in the bottom of Mass Ave when you look at the Mm -hmm. Right, you're taking away these spaces that were in the study, right. and you're adding this and this. Correct. So, you, so you're adding we, half of what you're taking Well, he's taking, taking out half more, more from the tax, tax covered, um, the library yet. parking lot. Right, the library were disregarding the yeah, library. Yeah, I mean, so right. HMS disregarded the library, brought us back down to the railroad lot, and then expanded on that one. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree that it's probably conservative because it looks like there's more on street parking here mm -hmm. than there was here. Yeah. Almost double. But these were one hour versus, uh, it's else? probably the same mix. Yeah, it's the same mix. It's probably the same mix. Yeah. And, you know, the I agree with what they said that these parking may not be used as heavily as the ones right in the center mm -hmm. because they're a little bit farther out of the center also. So I liked some of those recommendations, and I thought they were really, really valid. Um, I think opening up the permit parking somehow is the answer in the temporary fix. Right. Yeah. I'll let other people Andy? give some comments. Um, from Andy? Um, could you help me? Understand this chart. Help me too. I can go back. Which to chart? Uh, what I want to know is. Is that the tax chart or the HMS chart? The, 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 well, let me put it this way. Just for a second, let's use 47 spaces. Right. Is that valid? Is it valid? Yeah. Is that valid? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Okay, so this is a total amount of parking, including lots, permit lots, and... Yes, also, you know, not including the tap, which are located with 1,000 feet, and not utilized. So we don't know, they didn't go out and count those extra spots. No. They used the tax study. East side. <coughs> yes. so, so they didn't use all of the spaces. Are. They didn't include all of the spaces to the east. Right. Of the restaurant. So these these spaces, you see this circle here. This is what the thousand feet is. But the tax study went up to here because okay. they were studying kind of a circle out here. I see, I see. So they included all of this lot. Uh, they included the library lot. They included these. I heard it. They included these parking spaces here. So these numbers for on street parking include these parking spaces up here and do not include the ones down here. The ones. Okay. So, so there's actually a few more on street parking yeah, spaces, you have, probably. Um, you have just Mass Ave here, and then you have Mass Ave in Broadway. Right, so you're almost doubling the on street in that short section. Yeah. Okay, so what's the number of likely to be? We don't know. I don't want to Nobody guess. went out and counted. I don't want to right, guess. So existing, existing count with modifications discussed. Right? Mm -hmm. And the next column is existing utilization of those at those times, yeah. of all of those parking spaces. So that's just taking the 255 divided into 341. Right, the first one yeah. yeah. opens yeah. up. Yeah. I, I see. I see. But in consideration at 6 o'clock, it completely opens up because uh, all the permits cease to exist at 6. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's showing. So that, that point it dropped down to 66%. But I think Show me that. The, um, I saw that in here somewhere. Basically. And yeah. you can compare the existing utilization. Let's take each one as an example. Yeah, mm -hmm. So the weekday, midday at 1 o'clock, the existing utilization was 75%, meaning 75% of all that parking was full. Right. There's 25% right. open at 1 o'clock on a weekday. Gotcha. With the additional spaces that are needed for the restaurant, right. and we're adding two more in addition to what they did in this parking study, it sounds like. Yeah. Oh, okay. now if, if we use 90 spaces, now, we're adding two yeah. more. If we use yeah, 94, yeah. we're adding three more. Let's assume we're using 90. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so we're adding two more spaces. That's what you use in the So, well, let's, let's disregard two, three, three, that right now. So when they add in all their restaurant spaces, yeah. based on the 185 count, we're at 83% utilization. So our parking spaces went up. So if okay, so we're at 83. That's the way right, I'm trying so the to figure proposed out how the chart count, works. To the yeah. existing yeah. count is, <laughs> is one thing, and then it goes up. So what we're comparing is existing utilization at weekday, midday Column was 75. Three. When you add in all the parking spaces as though their restaurant were full, with the function room full, you're at 83% utilization. Okay. So weekday, midday is no issue, it seems, when you count all of the railroad lot. Okay. Weekday, midday, and not count and the library Saturday library evening is mm -hmm. no issue. Right. Weekday evening starts to become an issue, but they took the counts at 6 o'clock, which is what Bob's pointing out. And at 6 o'clock is exactly when the permit parking stops. Mm -hmm. So after that time, the, the, the lot would start to decline in use, Russell, theoretically. Russell. Right. Russell. Russell. Permitted parking. All, par all permit parking. Right. So the space is open up at 6 o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, so they're up at 101 compared to 95, but that 95 by, you know, 7 o'clock might be down farther. Or it could be up. That's the problem with this, is you don't know which way it's going to go. I just want to see how this is going to go. She's not talking about car movement. She's not talking about that. But if a permit's all expired at 6, yeah. I mean, we're talking about the capacity immediately going up by... Yeah. She's talking about the cars moving. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the people might be parked there. The they yeah. don't have to leave just because their permit parking ends at 6. They can okay. put... Money the they can put money in the meter and yeah, stay until midnight if they okay. want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the meters stop at 6 too. Yeah. But what about Saturday? Oh, the meters stop at 6 also. Okay. But they still can stay, is your point. Right, they still can stay. But the okay. people, <laughs> us unpermitted folk, can now park in the permit spaces after 6 o'clock. Okay. And now, what about the Saturday midday? That's your. So that's again, the problem time. But, but there is. Again, it's 11 a.m. Uh, uh, hypothetical is Function that. Room. There is going to have 200 people at 11 a.m. 123 permitted spots sold to students. And those permits are Monday through Saturday permits. I see. That the students at the high school use. 
so and on that particular day they were 66 percent full so or no 60 yeah they 60. were 66 percent utilized, utilized the permit parking so there was 28 cars open basically in the permit parking at that particular time, even though existing utilization overall is at 99 percent, if we if we could use the permit parking, they, they we could get more permits. They come to permanent services as if they were it's occupied, tight. whether they're not. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. So this is pushing the 99 percent up to 107 in this particular right. time on this particular day. Of that 123 yeah. permits to the school, uh, to them, which again they don't want to go inside the community. Some but somebody's parking there. Sixty-six percent of the cars are there. Right. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there could be something going on on right. Saturdays Doors. at the school. The average Joe Allen Tony is parking there, disregarding the fact. Possibly that knowing that there's nobody parking there on Saturdays. Possibly. Mm -hmm. so, so you know yeah. this this suggested doing a study on that Saturday usage right. and find out what how much is typically open there, and see if we should be looking at that. Yeah. Is it true? Does that answer your question, Andy? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, okay, so two Andy's there, there are certain, Andrew. Well, what we're Andrew. seeing is, okay. is these two periods look like they're high, but what you're saying is it's tweaked by the uh, time of the day that you took it, mm. uh, and factors like that permit parking opening up after six on a weekday mm. evening, mm -hmm. and the issue of students not really being there on a Saturday. That's right. Mm -hmm. so, those numbers may be skewed. Mm -hmm. um, why would it not be hottest on a Saturday evening? Well, on a Saturday evening, I think Saturday mid midday, you also have the region as well, having an afternoon. But that's uh, the lowest. Event. That's the lowest. That's 74. Percent. Saturday midday. But, but you're tapping at 74 percent is your Saturday evening. Yeah, but that's theoretically so low. your restaurant peak time. It's at seventy four percent utilization. I'm just wondering why that's well, lower than and lower than Saturday and midday. Maybe a lot of the stores closed and just restaurants are open. Yeah. 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 By seven o'clock the stores are closed. So that's when you have yeah. you have the excess capacity. Okay. So just yeah. restaurants are open, people are going out to restaurants but not mm -hmm. to stores anymore now. Unless there's something going on in the So what I'm interested in is Having understood this, how this works now, that how you address, and maybe you've said it, but it'd be good to summarize that when you guys come back to it. The um, reasons that the, the 101 and the 107 should be, how they should, in what context they should be considered. So why don't you come back? To so it? okay, so was that? That's very, all. Very yeah. Good? Um, so before I come back to Bruce, I guess I, I've just got a couple observations, and not really any requests or questions at this point. I guess just from my perspective, and this is just my own board discussion, is I look at this as two different things almost at this point, and I like this chart for that reason, right? We have the front of the house, regular restaurant, which is we're adding essentially uh, plus six uh, parking spaces in respect to that because we're upping it under the new and final yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, plan. Uh, 106 seats, which is uh, 26 uh, additional uh, seats, which is actually seven, seven additional spaces. Um, so, so that's the, the front of the house. And I think that it's obviously tight. And I think just anecdotally, we all know that parking is tight in, in Arlington Center. But I think if we were looking at this project and it was someone coming in with a request for 106 seats, we might take a certain <coughs> view of you know, parking as well as everything else. Moving it from 80 to 106, this might be a different conversation. Then I look at it as a solicitor, almost a second project, which is the function of the park, right? And if that is truly a function, then I'm not foreseeing you know, some of the parking issues that this leads to, such as an 11 a.m. On a, on a Saturday being an issue, right? I mean, I, I just, my own personal history says that you know, other than maybe a shower or that's something what I was like that, that, right? Maybe shower, I mean, bridal shower, sure. but that's they, a function room too. Sure. Yeah, but that's usually. But but my point is, is that, is that this is my own view, right? Is that forget about it here. If anyone anyone wanted to do a function room in any of the other spaces, CVS closes down and wants to put in 40 seats. Part of me says that we have to start thinking about this and not being so specific about 
my own view is, is exactly right on, on well, is, does the study say that there is enough parking? There isn't. There's not enough parking for anybody in the center right now. And the, my, my personal thoughts on it is, is that in order to move some of these things forward, we have to take a different approach. I think that the reason Saturday evening 74% utilization is because people don't do enough to communicate where they should be parking, yeah. right? And I think that's the bigger problem. The reason that that's so low is because people aren't using that parking lot for restaurant parking. Mm -hmm. They're just, you know, going around the block until they find something and parking in front of people's driveways and everything else. So my point is, is my own personal belief in this whole discussion and everything else, I certainly don't want us to absolutely crush the center parking, all right? So I think we absolutely need to understand what's going on. But I look at a function room use, I think it's a helpful use to the center. I think it's a, a helpful use to um, what this town needs. And I think from a parking perspective, my big thing is, is I think it's the most important for folks to communicate where they should be parking. Because we're going to have this problem no matter what, no matter what any, anyone else wants to come in. So, like I said, I don't have any questions. I don't have anything else. It's just, you know, for discussion. Uh, I'll, what you're I'll saying is, look, we should look at the mitigation. Yeah. I, would say, well, I think mitigation is hugely important in this regard. And as a person coming into this community, I really strongly stress that all businesses do what you're saying because I would not feel comfortable unless I made sure everybody knew where to exactly park for any kind of event because. It's only helpful to them, but it's also helpful for, for the community where people know where to go to structure. And if everybody's just leaving up like the Wild West to park wherever you can, it's just chaos. Mm. Yeah. So, Bruce, before we move on to parking mitigation and, and parking plans, I just want to uh, respectfully disagree with Absolutely. you, Mike, go for it. On, the, on, on how you count the parking, uh, the, the seats. And I don't think there's anything in the bylaw that says we can differentiate between the dining room and the function room. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be a good idea, but it's not in the bylaw now. And I don't think that we have the authority to read the bylaw differently because it might be convenient for this particular applicant. No, no I mean, I, yeah. I understand your point. And I certainly understand that it's likely the function room isn't going to be operating at the, all the same times that the dining room is. Mm -hmm. But again, if I just go back to the bylaw, it says seats in a restaurant. It doesn't differentiate. Why can't we put a condition in that says there will be a function room for special events? Well, you could, but it's a policing issue to that. It is. Uh, but so is everything else that we do. Okay. Um, but if I can just go on, and yeah. I, I want to also. Yeah, no, this isn't. This is no, just I just wanted to say that's what Bob could agree to do. Offer, you know, one little bit of, of maybe relief for the applicant. Um, you know, I personally don't see any problem in counting all of the railroad uh, parking area as being within the thousand feet because, uh, yes, the entrance is within the thousand feet, so that helps. And I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, based on my observation of human behavior, I'm not going to stop at a thousand and one feet if there's a parking space next to it or two spaces over. So um, I, I don't see a problem in including the maximum of count that you have in the railroad parking space. But lastly, when you come back to per this table three, I am troubled by the fact that at two of those time periods, we are over capacity for a 185 seat restaurant, albeit not by too much, but mm -hmm. we're over the number there. Um, and if we're talking about adding three additional spaces, we're incrementally a little farther over the number. I don't know what the breaking point is, but at some point, you know, it, you know, we, we've we've uh, overclocked the uh, parking capacity there. So I'm a little reluctant without evidence to show me what happens at a 200 seat level to conclude that yeah, it's, it can continue to absorb beyond. Of beyond the capacity. So those are my thoughts. Christine, coming back to you on, on any additional thoughts? I agree with Bruce on the railroad app lot. 
-hmm. I think because the entrance is included, I know that the thousand feet only includes the one section of it, but mm -hmm. you're in the parking lot now. So I think we could include that whole part. Um, yeah, other than that, on this particular point, I don't have anything else. I agree with including the railroad lot as well. I think that makes sense. I think it's important to take into consideration that some of the things we're looking at here do include yeah, that 100%, 107% here. Yeah, that's Saturday midday, like you said. There's not all that much of a chance of that being used every single Saturday. We're still up at 99% without that, but. Here, there. I think Saturday evening was the main concern. I think it's reassuring to know that the parking is not being used very often at that time of day. Well, I think that's the difference. We need to speak that the permits expire at 6. Yeah. And all yeah. of a sudden, I think that 7 o'clock Saturday evening is more indicative of the true mm -hmm. capacity in those lots all day Saturday. Right, right. So maybe it's it's an issue to Addressing the theoretical permit times. Okay. Well, I agree with the uh, Russell, I mean the railroad lot. Uh, I think the shared parking is de facto what's <coughs> happening. Uh, but we have something in our, we've discussed this before, Carol, where we, we do have to arrange, if an arrangement can be made for a shared parking arrangement. An agreement can be made for a shared parking arrangement. Mm -hmm. That can be part of a, that can be considered by the board as part of a parking solution. I believe that's the case. I believe we've done that before in other circumstances where it wasn't a permitted, it wasn't a public lot or a public oh, parking. Like but it was playtime with Jim and Joe. Yes, we're talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's going to be after six. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And those aren't the problem times, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock really. in the morning. Gotcha. Okay. And the 101 could come down because of that, possibly. So it could help that number, but it won't have to help Saturday midday. But thinking of it, too, that having your restaurant completely full Saturday midday and your function room full. Uh, maybe. That'd be a dream, but I doubt that would right. happen. Or even a function of 90 people at 11 a.m. It could happen a few times a year. Okay. But you bring the Regent Theater in here into any of this equation and... That's correct. Yeah. It's hard well, to look at just this little slice yeah. of time. But I think you're seeing yeah. the Regent Theater. I mean, you're right. If you bring it in as a 500-seat theater, I think you're right. But I think you're, you're physically seeing the cars in the study, right? That, that are the parked that there. Are actually parked. Yeah. It on depends Saturday. on what yeah. ha was happening at the region. No, and I understand, but yeah. I'm saying it, you can't say, okay, and then we're going to toss this on top of it because I think it has to. You have to say that the study does yeah. include that. Yeah. Right? I mean, we have to. We have to know that what we're looking at, what TAP did, was valuable, but it's valuable in a very small way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, a real parking study is what really would tell us what these numbers would be. We're we're still just. And we knew that. We By asking that. them to give us what they could, we knew we'd still be guessing. And we are. We have a little bit more indication on November 17th or whatever day this was that this is what was happening. Are there any other questions on the parking study? Because I think I'd like to move on to, because uh, we're definitely behind schedule yeah. at this point, I'd like to move on to parking mitigation. And uh, if you could go through uh, some of those things, please. Um, we've laid out in two aspects of parking mitigation. The first is 3.3 regarding the employees. Um, that's specifically dealing with employees uh, as part of his uh, participated lease with the landlord. He is going to actually get two on-site spaces which weren't taken into consideration in the parking study. So if, if he, in order to, he can encourage his employees, which as he tells us now, almost all of them take buses, uh, MBTA to and from work. If that continues, he's going to encourage that. Um, he's agreeing. We've looked into what time the last buses run through the heights. I put that in part, portion number three of section one, employee commuting and parking. If the employees who are taking the buses have to leave early 
to let them go so they make sure they will get that last um, MBTA bus out of town. The stops are right across the street and around the corner in front of the Regent. It's the uh, 77 to Harvard Square and the 65, I believe it was, to um, Leach Mirror. So those, those two buses, the lead employees who need to catch them out so they can catch that last bus out of town. Um, it's assuming that employees work out of, out of town. Um, if the employees do decide to drive, he's going to encourage carpooling by those employees by opening up one or both of those on-site parking spots to them. So that will take, so if you're carpooling anywhere from two to three people, out of the mix, and they won't be um, driving cars into town. Of course, they will not be able to park in that um, space right in front of the building because those are all one-hour spots. So if employees did drive, they'd have to go out every hour and change, move their car. That's another reason that employees won't be using their own cars. Um, I, I guess if necessary, he could, as part of his employee benefits, work out some further incentives with them, such as subsidizing a Charlie card or whatever, but that's you know, a business decision I'm not going to volunteer that he's going to do. I, first because of all, it's and most of the employees that were ever in the industry that work and are very really professional and know that they're food, beer, stuff, understand driving is not, it's not those problem because the fact is, you have meters, you're going to have to go out every two, three hours. So most of them are either taking skateboards, bicycles, buses, or trains, and that's at my other place. I'm the only one who drives, no one else. And that's only because I have to go to the different markets to pick things up, and I have 20 employees there. So it's the employees going to fall in the same category. And so that, that would be the employee part of the deal. It's customer parking. Um, we set out a, a, a number of different plans um, to direct them to the Brussels Common parking lot as well as that Railroad Out parking lot. Um, and what I've suggested and he's put in there, he's going to actively encourage customers not to go down Compton Ave, Alton, and um, Belton Streets to look for parking because there's no parking, there's no parking allowed. What, what's going to come to is the awareness. I am going to yeah. be on all my websites, Facebook, and Twitter. It's basically going to be out there for parking, where to park at the general area. And, and, and those emails. Those that are on and the emails. And any park in any event or function is going to be specifically told where to park. That this is the place to park for functions and events. And usually it's just communication awareness of customers. It's all that's needed here. It, everybody's happy to know if you tell them where to go. So we were saying, oh, we're all hey, it's going to a place and not going to the where to park or what it is. just taking guesses about it. Well, in the function, it will provide specific instructions. And on his um, menu board, they'll have a directions how to get to the, the two parking lots. Um, you know, that's all detailed out in those seven bullet points. Okay. Uh, questions? So, at this point, you have a commitment from the landlord for those two additional parking yes. spaces? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would count towards the 29 additional spaces that you were I wouldn't think so. talking about. No? No, I wouldn't think so. It is. Well, it, it no. would. No. It, it Employees wouldn't. weren't counted in yeah. seat counts, so. though. No. It, and those are behind the building. But if that's just two more cars if he won't be putting them on the street. Because you're back where the dumpsters yep. are. Yes. Yeah. 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 Two less cars in public areas. It's nice, but it's kind of irrelevant to the parking mm -hmm. Technically, it technically. would. It, no, technically, it would. Technically it, would count. It, technically, it does count. Towards yeah, because it, again, we're computing the number of parking based on every four seats of the restaurant, not necessarily every four customers. Patrons. Patrons. Of the restaurant, so. Right, but the employees aren't taking a seat. It doesn't. It, it does. That has nothing. Yeah. The, the parking the requirement are parking is for those. the. Right, I understand, but but under the, the calculation where we calculate the number of parking spaces that you need for that for a dining establishment, it says one parking space for every four seats at the restaurant. It doesn't talk about whether that's an employee driving or not, or, or a customer. It's just a calculation. But, okay. um, 
I, I like the, the, the rest of the, I, I, I applaud you for getting the two extra spaces because two extra spaces takes pressure off some someplace. Confidence that I know she's, yeah. she's done all right. Good, good. And I thought the rest of the parking mitigation plan is good. I think you're doing everything that you can to try to encourage the customers to find uh, the lots in town. Um, so, and, and I applaud the uh, encouragement to use public transportation. Christine? Uh, the only comments I had were the parking analysis that was done by Hudson Stein. Mm -hmm. um, mentioned that there were other options like, um, you know, other than playtime and maybe doing valet parking there, that kind of stuff. They mentioned a shuttle from Alewife. Is that something you're seriously considering? No, no, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I would have the slightest idea what he's talking about. I mean, uh, you get to Alewife, I'm sure you can take a bus to there. I mean, I don't get it. I don't know why. Yeah. Even okay. That. All right, I just wanted to, to check on that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They're going to compete with and the NCAA. There's some kind of special function going on. If you guys have it, we're having some kind of event in Arlington, I would contribute to something like that, but I wouldn't. Yeah, he, he made it. Just anticipate buying a van. Yeah. Sitting there for that occasional one. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Andy? Oh, on item seven, how would you contribute? Oh, there it is. Um, I think the bikes is interesting and the improvements to the uh, plaza. Where, yeah. where, where what, whatever way, I would have to be get into the community and start um, circulating and get to know individuals. Uh, I am very much an advocate on the community and what they're working with to um, make it better and to help all everything we can. I mean, I do it in Austin. I have my family. We do it in Newton as well. Uh, we have paid for that schools. Uh, so when I come in here, I'll be 100% especially in that square area to make it beautified, to make it more accessible to everybody from bikes to foot traffic. Uh, I I couldn't really honestly tell you how I would do. I would just be a way of, if I could get into one of the boards to help out and advocate for parking signs but, and just you know, come up with like some kind of drawing for a better way to communicate where they're at, maybe more visibility and some graphics and for people to see. Uh, I don't know how else to explain that until I got into the mix. But you would be willing to contribute uh, whether it was oh, yeah. paying for signage or... Oh, I, um, uh, my mentor, Jerry Quinn, he always said that once you uh, get into community and if you're making money out of that community, you should contribute back to it. And I agree with that 100%. That's how I was taught. So. Um, I appreciate the uh, parking mitigation plan. I think it's uh, some of the things that we have talked about, and I think it works pretty good. So, uh, folks are okay. Let's move on to the sound mitigation plan. Um, when we were here last time, Christine asked specifically about how the rear room is going to be um, insulated for, for sound for protection of the abutters. We did provide an A300, which I think you all have, um, where they are having a furring wall. And I detailed it out here. I'm no architect, but uh, seven inch furring wall with a gap space, three and a half inches of sound attenuation insulation, and three quarter inch um, wall board. And that is all up against a cinder block wall. Um, so he's going to have quite extensive sound insulation in the back there. And there were no windows in the back. He does not plan to put any windows in the back. Um, and the only exit is the uh, emergency fire door, which would be kept closed at all times. Except for emergency. Except for emergency, <laughs> yes. Um, and in, to go further into that, the function room will not be having any live bands with ticket sales, it won't be having any, it's a functional, okay? it's not a concert hall. It will be used as one would go to an any baby shower or christening or whatever. Um, you're not going to have music or a sound system projecting so loud that the folks can't talk for what? the purpose that they're there. Correct. It's not going to just, I mean, you're going to have a restaurant right next door, so right in front, so there's no way they can have sound going that loud, like it's uh, some kind of 1,000 person grade nightclub type of thing. I mean, it would be impossible. And also, anybody in the back there is not going to appreciate the fact that the noise being that loud. It's going to be the party they want to communicate to each other. And again, it's going to be, most likely, it's going to be from baby showers, functions, to birthday parties. I don't see anything Corporate being, events. Small corporate events, which are going to get crazy with uh, the music. There'll probably be two big speakers a day, bring their own DJ in. I'm not going to provide a sound system for the DJ that probably have that bring their own in, which will probably be two speakers, and have it allowed they can get that to a certain point without me telling them to turn it down. That's about as loud as well. In the front of the house, he anticipates having no amplified music. Uh, two to three keys <coughs> on Sunday. Sunday, you said maybe yeah. Sunday jazz? I like a Sunday jazz, yeah. Um, two to three keys. Non-amplified, so be no amplified music. He's not going to be doing the karaoke in the front of the house. Um, and the karaoke is only based if someone books a karaoke party for themselves that they're bringing their own karaoke. It's not me doing providing any karaoke. Yeah. Just so you know, you won't I'm not promoting karaoke. I just say that if someone comes in, they want to have a party, a corporate, and they want to bring karaoke in, I'm not going to object to it. I'm just not promoting it. Yeah. Um, there'll be no outside speakers. I have no outside um, amplified music of any sort. We're just whatever um, ambient house noise comes out. Um, 
This part has the dumpsters. Um, they're in the rear of the place. Keep them as far as possible as you can. If the landlord does to an extent designate where they have to be, but we'll work to get those as far away from the property lines and as close to the other cutting restaurants and businesses. Uh, dumpsters, they all have uh, the new plastic lids, so when they um, open them up, you don't get that loud metallic bang anymore. Yeah. You just get the noise of the, the lift truck um, coming in. And Arlington does have bylaws regulating these times of days and noise when he can and can't do these sort of things. It's going to make sure his um, tip guys and one of the things I'm strictly adhere to the bylaws. And one of the things I will do is talk to the people, businesses in there. And if they are having the dumpster trucks come in after that time, I will talk to them about I think it would be more appropriate for them to bring in within the time we can share so they can do the afternoon. Because there's no point. It's in the back there. It's not disturbing their business for someone to come in at 1 o'clock in the afternoon to do the dumpster. Yeah. It doesn't make sense for them to come in at 2 o'clock in the morning. So he'll, you know, through, through his contracts with the tip companies, you make sure they can enforce their bylaws and stay within those bylaw times. Um, and he's also agreed for the abutters to provide them his contact information for if, he, if they have concerns, so they can contact him directly regarding the sound orders, delivery, and their customer issues. Um, I don't know, last time there was public comment, people commented that some people come down into the neighborhoods tipsy and well, I, doing I, such I, sort of things as that. These aren't all, they are already existing, um, but Bob will. I'll be my, leave myself open for uh, communication about the sound noises of the deliveries, deliveries out in the street. Yeah. If they have to do with me, if not, I'll be happy to uh, help, you know, tell the other business owners and the guys and stuff. But in reference to people coming down the street or doing create, I'm, I'm not going to be a, I'm not the police. So yeah. I'm you just, just going to do whatever I need to call the police. But I'm very much into the neighborhood communication and why are you doing it? Because hopefully they will be my customers to come in and the one from angry at me. Okay. Um, questions on uh, sound mitigation, Bruce? I don't have any questions on sound mitigation. No, they've answered all my questions. Andrew? Yeah. Andy? Same here. Okay, let's just run through the last couple here. Kitchen exhaust filtration. The, the filtration system he's um, proposing is a, I believe I sent out the spec for it. It's a um, one and a half inch stainless steel welded hood filters. Um, that currently uses a designed trap grease and to install odors. His big thing is that they do very little if any frying. Uh, fry laters are your main problem of grease and smoke and odors um, because they do very little. They um, currently, what he has in the Austin restaurant, it's very efficient. Um, filtration for the um, restaurant um, and well, I'll tell you a little more about how that works. Um, so you, you would like to use that, those type of filtration systems. Okay. And the point of the point out all the grease. Grease is basically the odor and the pollution of the air on it. If you look at um, like McDonald's, you go by that you see the smoke is dark. It's not, I mean it's, it can be middle of summer it's still dark. It's just not clean. Um, anytime um, you can buy my restaurant, you won't even see smoke except for wintertime, that's just the heat coming up out of it. Um, we do very little fill, uh, frying, but we, we change the oil every, every two days just to keep it clean and fresh tasting for it because we do our fries. Other than that, everything else is grilled or sauteed up, and we get very little coming out of there. Any questions? I, I have just one. Will you be reusing what's already there, or are you? No, no, no. I'll probably be getting all right okay. there because that, 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 that one that's there. It doesn't have the makeup air. Yeah, sure. I just wondered if you, you um, considered a carbon system, and if if you well, have I, d uh, decided not to, why you wouldn't use one at the station? It's because first of all, it's thirty thousand dollars more, just on top of my regular filtration system that I have already. Did you did look into it? Um, one, frankly, it seems a little overkill for his organization. Carbon filters are hundred dollars each. So he would need twelve of the filters to have to be replaced twice a year. 
on top of the actual system that but there's two different things. So they got filtration vent and also you they got a carbon filtration system that is in addition to your hood system that takes that air, circulates it back through and it comes back out through the hood system again. And that's an additional twenty to thirty thousand dollars in cost and takes up space that's neither one of the but again yeah. and the recurring yearly cost. Yeah, recurring year. But again, based on the way we are are cooking and stuff, there's very little smell at all, if any. Um, of course, you're going to have some of the grill, um, but most of that's caught by the filters that are there. And we are looking into, they have charcoal filters that actually will take the place of the ones that are there. And those are a little bit more expensive. They might filter out pretty much another 90% more of the stuff, but we're looking into the sizing right now. And that's, that's usually pretty applicable too. But at, at this point, what we got is usually works really well with the, um, the system that we use is uh, make up air that recycles back through and it goes through again so you're not it's like double filtration type stuff okay. uh, the last thing on the mitigation plan is the powers of operation before you schedule I think we already hit that unless uh, someone has any questions on that so um, okay. yeah there was just a question last time about when employees would be coming and checking and that's why we put it in here okay just to um, make it very clear to the board right without any ambiguity before we start discussion any additional questions I two other questions for mr Rubin. um so you would have been prepared to operate at 185 seat capacity based on the previous plan that they submitted. I would have been because I was completely restricted by the um, by the codes of the building. I wasn't okay. happy with it, and I was actually in the process of talking to the architects about pushing everything back to increase the front because the point mm -hmm. of it is what I was looking at by doing that. I'm losing 500 seats a week. Mm -hmm. uh, during uh, just uh, the peak time if they were to fill up in, in the front, front house, right? Mm -hmm. And now we lose 500 seats based on an average of $20 per person, we're talking about $10,000 a week. Mm -hmm. And that's a really, really big bite. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they came back to me, because I, I was really just mulling it over with them and stuff and talking, I'm like, it's got to be some way. And they're like, no. And then all of a sudden, Mike came back and talked to the architect, and then she called me up to do like the great news, which is he gave me the wrong specs, and we worked it out. He looked at it, he said yes on this. And I'm like, oh, then I can look at it. I, I'm, I'm more appealing to that. So that. 200 seats makes a big difference on the bottom line in well, terms of operating the Because they're all on the front of the house. I when I took them off, the, when they took off the bite out the back, I don't look that I, most parties that you book on a uh, small base, there's not much more you're going to get than 50 people. On average, of the years I've been doing it, the biggest party I've ever had would be a pub crawl. And I don't see that happening here. That's in the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. Most parties, functions I get is about 50 to 60 people, average 30 people. I don't get much more than that. I wouldn't see, unless it's a big hoo-ha, and I doubt they're going to come book it with me because they're going to need space for 200 people. Mm -hmm. So the average party is no more than 50 people. Okay. So I was willing to take off the back. But I, did, oh, I wanted to leave the option open just in case I get a party of 65. Because you never know, most likely 50 will show up, but you might get to 65. Mm -hmm. And the front is what I really want more function on to do, okay. to do that. Then that's where the seats, the, every day that you're losing, you lose the money. The front's mm -hmm. the bread and butter of the business. Yes. Okay. And then my other question was, with respect to the operation of the function room, and our earlier discussion about pushing the, the parking capacity, um, could you operate your restaurant without having any function room activity on Saturdays before 6 p.m.? I only reason why is because it really wouldn't. I, I look at it also as a part of the community. Mm -hmm. You have baby showers, you have bridal showers, you have um, from um, functions from uh, birthdays to um, just anniversaries, and a lot of the baby showers and bridal showers are not going to be after six o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. And that, and Saturday would be, hopefully we'd have quite a few little um, baby showers or bridal showers. So we'd have like a luncheon, maybe at one o'clock or something like that, and have that. I can't say that. I think we'd be constrained to that, and I think it would be, 
uh, it wouldn't benefit me at all, and also I think it would hurt me if uh, some sort of calls on my like no, I can't legally book and pay until after six o'clock. And who wants to bring the baby out at the, or be part of you know pregnant walking through the place at six seven o'clock at night? <laughs> I'm sure they will, but pretty close to it. I mean that's usually what happens on a Saturday afternoon. That's those are the type of parties I usually work on book anything else besides that. Oh. <laughs> um, we had talked last time, I think Bruce brought it up, about the LEED energy efficiency checklist mm -hmm. that we usually have you fill out for special permits. Mm -hmm. have you, and you talked about all the things that you were going to yeah. do. Yeah, we're all about that, yes. The Are we ready to fill that out? or? Well, first of all, we have to get the okay on everything so then we can say, okay, this is what we're putting in there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll fill it out. I have no problem after that. It's just I don't know what to put in. Where am I going with this? You're not that far along yet. Well, because I don't, I, I, I'm already spending thousands of dollars already sitting here waiting, doing all these other plans, and then the next step is to spend more money. But I gotta get the okay. I mean, I spent quite a bit of money, but I can't spend any more money because if everything gets denied or gets changed, then it's no good to me. Right. And then so I don't know what I have. I can tell you basically it will be of energy efficiency as much as possible. Um, the designer designed schools who are all about that, the colleges and stuff, some of the restaurants in there. Mm -hmm. So he's 100% on the board with that. So how do we handle that at this point in the special permit? It's not addressed. It's not addressed? No. <coughs> I'll give you my personal guarantee it will be um, that, but I'll fill it out at the words, whatever you need. It's just I need to know what I'm going to put in there. Yeah, I understand that. We're encouraged. To incorporate? It's not a requirement. <coughs> I'll make sure. Anyway. We'll continue to I'll encourage sure you. Anyway. <laughs> you, you, you. You come look at more. Well, well, as he said last night, it, it, the more energy efficient he is, the better it off his bottom line. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And LED, we would like, strongly encourage that. LED oh, might oh, cost a few dollars more now. It's, it it'll pays last. for itself over yeah. years. It lasts forever. Yeah. Ten years of that. The only other question I had was we talked a little bit about figuring out where all the parking signage was. Did that go any further? I know Carol said more parking signage was going to go in and there was a plan maybe as to where that was going. And it's funny because I drove around looking for your parking plan. I've only seen one parking sign really up. I haven't seen really anything. I drove around looking for I did too. For that purpose. <laughs> and I was like, There's, that's you know, why I'm wondering if they the, need to have more park. I mean, you really yeah. seriously need to have some signs up. There's none up. Okay. I, I drove around. I was like, I saw one. And there's not even a sign. No, it's a big piece. To go there down is a plan. There is. Okay. Um, and you're willing to work oh, yeah. with that? You put that in your mitigation plan? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's it. There, there may be no need once these are you're up. It's really hard to, to tell right now whether there will be additional need once these signs go in. <coughs> do we have any timing on that? No, this is separate from this conversation. As soon as DPW can do it. Okay, but I mean it's on. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's on the list. It's on the list. Okay, that's, yeah. that's more what I think. Uh, I don't have anything extra. Yeah. So. No, I think I'm okay for now. So, so if that's it for the applicants, then um, any further discussion? Uh, otherwise, my thought is to bring ourselves through the uh, different elements of the okay. EDR and uh, have a discussion around each of the points and see where everyone's head is at. Obviously, we're not voting on each or, or whatever else. We'll vote as a whole. But the uh, thought is that we can kind of have any questions or, or whatever else we can put to. So I'm going through Carol's um, memo of July 24th and the different sections of the special uh, Section 10.11A1, uh, uses requests or lists in the table of use regulations. The use for restaurant over 2,000 square feet is allowed by special permit and is in fact already by the special permit, just not in the what's been permitted so far. Um, there were so many of these. Could folks pipe up if they want to discuss one along the way, if that's okay? Uh, 1182, the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Um, and the application that the use as a restaurant is desirable to reoccupy the vacant business space and to serve a menu not otherwise offered. So um, with respect to that, I guess my, my comment on that is I, I do think a function room would be helpful um, to the center. And um, 
and I do think that the restaurant um, is desirable. That's my that's my thoughts. Um, you know, well, I concur, and we did hear from uh, some members of the audience speaking in favor of the idea of a uh, neighborhood community type pub atmosphere, um, which I could see working very well in Arlington. Uh, um, certain concerns about how we manage the noise and the parking and the traffic mitigation. So, um, but, but I think what I've heard from the applicant is the intent is not to create a noisy bar in the middle of town, but to really provide uh, a place where people can gather together informally and have some food and drink a couple of beers. I think that's kind of a, could be a good thing. I agree with Bruce. And we, we also had a number of emailed supporting comments that came in after the last round of public comments. Mm -hmm. So there does there do seem to be a number of people out there that are very excited that this is coming and I think it's a it's a use we don't have. I think the gentleman from the region theater summed it up nicely that it would give his patrons somewhere to go afterwards also and it would be welcomed in his eyes and I, I totally agreed with him that night and I still do. Yeah, I, I agree as well. I think it fills a need uh, in the town. It fills a building that's been empty for some time. And it, it, that function space is something that doesn't exist. And I think it would be great to have it. In the town. I, I agree. I think it's an appropriate use. And, uh, it would be a good uh, kind of generator of business and tax revenue. And this is the right place to have it. They are a good enough group, I believe, that will make good on the mitigations and neighborhood, uh, you know, good neighbor policies that, they, that they've stated that they would, would do. Carol, do you have anything? No, nothing to add. Okay. I, one, and I wasn't sure, but I, one thing I've been thinking about, and I'd like the board's opinion on this, I, I think we heard uh, both Attorney Leon as well as Mr. Ogin mention that they'd be okay with the condition with respect to the function part. And I understand the enforceability, so let's discuss that. Mm -hmm. But I wonder whether is that no, no, I, was was I, no, no, well, no, I thought you had said that 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 as far as using the function room as a function room and not opening it up as part of the day-to-day -day restaurant. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. and yes, not yes. include like actually making a condition that, that would be a function like room. Oh no, no, no there's no intention of using that as so with that, day seating or well, with that, and, and, and I understand that, that there's. Yes. You know, one thing I'd like the board maybe to consider, because I actually think the function room is a interesting use um, in the center, is if we said something to the effect of a condition, I just wrote this down, so forgive me, but um, that the, when we define the space in the back, um, be used for special functions and events, and to the extent it is desired that such space be used as part of the day-to-day -day restaurant, then such use must be made through opening this special permit or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. So that anyone who did want to make it into a, a true 200, 196 seat restaurant would have to come back to us and discuss mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that would be important. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, I think, I, I mean, Bruce, so you brought it up before, there's I'm enforceability right issues, mm -hmm. et cetera, but. I'm one hundred percent for that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's implied in, by the nature of a special permit all, in any event. If you True. The function room is only available for functions and yeah. special events and it's not part of the day-to-day -day restaurant operation, then you would have to, whether you said you had to open up the special permit okay. or not. But I think yes. I would, I think I would want to say and not day-to-day -day restaurant. Mm -hmm. In other words, I think we almost need to use the phrase day-to-day -day restaurant within whatever it is that we do, mm -hmm. so that someone doesn't all of a sudden start chipping away mm -hmm. at the notion of special function and, and event or something I agree. Like it should be crystal clear to somebody <laughs> who may come next yeah. that yeah. they can't come it's back really and try to litigate that, that, that this is the with way it should I be. I agree with you on that one. Yeah. So, but, but I mean, here's, the, here's what I did. If you want to reword, Bruce, you're the best with that. So, uh, so anyway, that that was just kind of like what I was jotting down over here. But but my thought is is that is that especially with respect to uh, eleven a two, essential or desirable to the public convenience. I think all of us have talked about favorably with respect to an area for you know business meetings and the like right in the center. I think would be helpful. 
So I, I'd kind of like to see that within the special permit itself, obviously. And we have this issue with all, so many things that we do. <coughs> flexibility is always going to be a, a little bit tricky, but uh, at least our, mm -hmm. at least what the expectation is is out there. So. Um, yeah, I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to the conditions. Okay. okay uh, 10, 11, 8, 3, the, the requested use will not create under traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. Um, <laughs> with respect to traffic, I think, you know, we, um, probably the restaurant had 80 seats, um, probably causes some pedestrian use. So, um, you know, I, I think we can talk about parking in respect to this, um, this element, but we could also talk about it in terms of the uh, four, 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 which I think probably makes a little bit more sense. So, any comments on uh, traffic and, and circulation? I'm sorry, traffic and uh, uh, pedestrian safety. safety. Can the mitigations be included as a condition? As yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to think they will be. Uh, the form in which those happen, I think we just need to think about it. I mean, if we ever had a condition that includes a number. <laughs> um, but uh, it would be convenient. It's kind of nicely spelled out and summarized. It is, it is, it summarized, is, it is spelled out really and summarized. Yeah, we should always ask for that. You want it more done? So uh, well, we, may, we may just set you up on something. Yeah, we may just take you up on that. So, um, but yeah, Andy, I think that is is key. Is with respect to well, when we get to an EDR four, I think that the uh, okay. parking mitigation uh, uh, memo is going to be very important. Mm -hmm. Um, moving on to 11. Jen. Yeah, sorry, you had other things on that. Well, Carol has mentioned in here Broadway Plaza being designed for pedestrian use, and this goes back to, I know the Board of Selectmen is ruling on the license. Um, the outdoor they need, seating. The outdoor seating. Yeah, right. Do we want to say anything about that in our um, special permit? The circulation, okay. pedestrian circulation, or we could cover it under EDR for circulation, but... I feel very strongly the pedestrian circulation in that plaza needs to be designed well. I think it has to be by law, by building codes and anything anyway. It has to, you can't do it without having the actual space, alleyways yeah. to go through alleyways in general. That's the reason why we had to change the plan on the inside. On the outside, it's definitely... I'm not, I'm not so much concerned about the space between the building and the seating or whether the seating's up against mm -hmm. the building. I'm more concerned about the impact you're having to the rest of the plaza as it is today. Mm -hmm. I know the plaza could get redesigned. Hopefully it will one day, but that would be my concern. But mm -hmm. So I don't know what we, if we would write something that pedestrian circulation within the plaza cannot be negatively impacted. That's a loose term. With the, <laughs> it is a loose term. <laughs> We have a loose plan right now. So. I think it's also it is the within the purview of the selectmen um, because it's it outdoor, is outdoor it's seating. Um, you know, it was suggested at a pre at, at a prior meeting that it was something that we should have mm -hmm. uh, to give some consideration to. And looking back at what the board did in the past when we had the zoning bylaw that allowed for the outdoor seating, yes, we sponsored it because it was a zoning bylaw, but I don't think it's ever really become part of what this board does in looking at special permits for dining establishments, other than taking into account that the outdoor seating does not count towards the parking count requirement. Um, so my own view is I think that is the, the selectman's uh, uh, issue to deal with. And that was the town council's view as well. Yeah. So, and that's, that's oh, it was okay. Thinking. Yes. So, but it may be worth a comment if we can at least comment to the board of selectmen that they should be aware oh, yes, of, um, of, of concerns uh, of and I also the design and dimensions of the outdoor seating area, particularly where the existing hardscape at Broadway Plaza may constrain where those seats go. Um, because there's I think that's a great idea. Hardscape and softscape. There's yeah. a tree, there's a light. But so having all walked that. back and forth through Broadway Plaza a couple mm -hmm. times since their last meeting, um, I was 
puzzled as to how you were going to fit in the seats. Well, I, I am yeah, I'm just looking at that because uh, you get the drone tree next door, they put those out, so then it's really, I'm thinking I might not even do it yeah. until someone can change the front of the whole plaza because it might maybe not be you just appeasing. do a few. Right, that's what I'm saying. Rather right. than the whole area. Exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I think a comment to the board. I, I a like selectman would be very good. It's I mean, idea. they're waiting for our written comments to make mm -hmm. their decisions, so. You know, once so, I get in, I get more of a feel what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. How would you summarize that? I, th I think what, what I was hearing were um, to um, provide the selectmen with the opinion, and, and I think we can kind of vote on that, but uh, the, the, the concern of the redevelopment board with the outdoor seating and the um, uh, pedestrian uh, safety and circulation okay. in Broadway Plaza. Thank you. We can we can address bike racks the same way possibly. Is that a board of selectmen issue also, or is that our That's issue? A good question. Because it's in the public realm and. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I think it's certainly worth putting into our letter too, or into memo uh, too, that um, especially if it's on the GIS that there is a bike rack in front. Mm -hmm. I guess our, my question would be, where yeah. is it? Sometimes they move for plowing, I don't know. No, no, and I know, but it should it be, you know, they may want to consider. Might have been there in the past. past. It might have gotten put back somewhere else. I, I, yeah. Correct, yeah. I'm just saying it, it might be. a number of possibilities. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, there's some kind of newspapers that have things there. Uh, oh, it's quite a few. <laughs> but I mean, but, but this, the bike rack is not there, right? I went to look where it's at. Yeah. You know, it's not there. It's new stuff yeah. things that I'm Maybe that's what they mean. I don't know if that should come up here. Okay. Um, that should probably come under, under EDR4, but... Okay. Uh, outdoor seating and pedestrian safety and circulation. Um, okay. 10.11A4, uh, the requ requested use will not overload any public water, drainage, or sewer. It's, I think, uh, the water and sewer system, I think, is, is sufficient. Is sufficient in that. Uh, preservation of landscape. The landscape shall be preserved in its natural state. And I mean, we're talking about a built existing building and existing landscape at this point. So. And working with the community to make improvements to Broadway Plaza. Yeah. And but that's also, you know, public space. I mean, that, that's, it is. that's the, we the can public street. That. We so. can encourage that and we can put a statement to that effect mm -hmm. to encourage that. In the special permit, I don't know if we're making an encouraging statement. Well, just that you know, I've already contacted a few people. <laughs> well, it's just a matter of waiting for the votes. We can't make encouraging statements. I don't think we want to make encouraging statements on that. Can we make that encouraging statement to the board segment, or is, is that something they're going to be looking at? Not really. I don't no? Think. Okay. No. Okay. I'll keep trying. <laughs> um, okay. Any special regulations for the use? Set forth in Article 11 of the film. Uh, EDR 1, preservation uh, of landscape. Uh, landscape is in its natural state. Oh, sorry, I already did that. EDR 2, relation of the building to the environment. Um, the facade will uh, be rebuilt uh, with operable windows. So, uh, any comments on proposed development shall be related harmoniously to the train and to the use, scale, and architecture of the existing buildings in the vicinity that have functional or visible relationship to the proposed buildings. The Arlington Redevelopment Board may require modification and massing so as to reduce the effect of shadow. We get to, well, we, oh, go ahead. Sorry. We get to look at uh, facade or storefront drawings as part of the special permit. Yeah, that's these ones. Is that? Yeah, yeah, I have the, um, I didn't yeah the only difference was is uh, this, oh no, this one does have the downloading. Yeah, yeah. The one that we had gotten earlier had uplighting, but other than that. And the background of the sign might be wood or it might be painted stuck out. It's not wood. It's painted. 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 It is going to be painted, painted for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's not painted. So I do think we've had it. Okay, fine. Yeah, we, we did talk about that last time, I think, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fine with the plan. Quite attractive. Any other comments? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, EDR 3, open space. All open space shall be designed as to add the visual amenities. Um, obviously, open space is pretty much the public uh, realm outside the restaurant, so 
Yeah, yeah, there is no open space right now. <laughs> exactly. Apply the land. Exactly. So there's not going to be any, I guess. That's right. There's those two parking spaces in there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put a park light on one. The dumpster. Okay, EDR4, circulation. With respect to vehicular and pedestrian bicycle circulation, including entrances, ramps, walkways, drives, and parking, special attention shall be given to location and number of access points to the public streets, especially in relation to existing traffic controls and mass transit facilities. With interior drives and access points, general interior circulation, separation of pedestrian and vehicular traffic, access to community facilities, and arrangement of vehicle parking and bicycle parking areas, including bicycle parking spaces required by the community number three, that are safe and convenient, and insofar as practical, do not detract from the use and enjoyment of proposed buildings and structures and the neighboring properties. So, um, with the additional seating uh, that is uh, proposed in the application, there is now a requirement of um, 29 additional parking spots, which, in accordance with the bylaw, uh, public, publicly available. Uh, parking lots within ten a uh, thousand feet may be included uh, in that parking. Um, comments, views. It's close. I think that um, there's probably sufficient parking from the information that we've been provided with, or there's enough information that's been provided to the board for us to conclude that there is available parking capacity in Russell <coughs> Common and the railroad lot and the other public streets, at least for most of the times that the restaurant would be in operation. Um, I'm encouraged by the fact that the applicant has submitted a parking mitigation plan. I would advise that we make that a special condition of the permit that the parking mitigation plan be implemented. Mm -hmm. um, I'm encouraged by the fact that the applicant has found two additional off-street parking spaces, um, and I would recommend that the board include in the permit that the applicant find replacement private parking in the event that those two parking spaces were at some point in the future lost, either if the landlord were to take them back or change the lease or uh, what have you. Um, I'll, I'll leave it for there and let other people talk. I would um, want to still encourage, in addition to everything Bruce said, um, that arrangements be pursued with um, Playtime, Jeremy Java, other private owners of, of parking lots, because whatever arrangements you can do with shared parking will only help yeah. the overall parking issues yeah, in the so center. Like, communication with me and opens up, and then I'm happy to get in communication with them because I would look into some uh, valley parking as well to help for the older people and people who just want to use it and like to have a lot nearby. I would love that. If uh, I'm looking right now, putting the doors out, we're, we're putting it out there for people to come back to us about it. Do we have a mechanism to keep encouraging that? Or? Keep showing that. <laughs> Carol and I call them. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if there's time. Because that's a very important element of this. And, and I was very encouraged that, that that was stated in the parking analysis that you did. Mm -hmm. Because any, any kind of shared parking use like that, and it's unfortunate other business owners aren't well, doing the same thing, but they haven't been forced to yet, no, and they I mean, haven't again, been asked if, to. If Greg calls me back, I'm on top of it as soon as it is. I've actually texted him a couple of times, and I guess he's not quite so uh, text what the savvy again back to his people, and he called me up and he says, I won't go back to you, and hasn't yet, but right. I'll keep pursuing it. Yeah. And if there's any other ones out there that I you can identify? I've already, and we'll just see what yeah. happens. Yeah, Great. Kind of get back. No one's gotten back to me, so I don't know if they're just a little nervous right now or what. So. Yeah. It's hard to say. I agree with what Bruce said, that in general, there yeah. seems to be parking capacity at most of the times when you want to use mm -hmm. the restaurant, but we don't have all the numbers for all that. And so we're, we're making it our best educated guess on that, um, what we can do. I think somewhere we need to state in here that, that we're, our determination included the Railroad Avenue 
a railroad, railroad mm -hmm. is it called Railroad Avenue or Railroad? Railroad Arcane? Lot. Uh, railroad Lot. Yeah. That we included all of the Railroad Lot mm -hmm. so that in the future if somebody else comes right. down the line. I think that's a great point. They understand it. how we arrived at that. Also the parking on the left side, on the east side. It wasn't incurred on it, right? Right, well. That's within the thousand feet of the yeah. radius. That's within the thousand feet, so that's a given, I think. The railroad parking yeah. lot was outside, part of it was outside of the thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, thanks. Uh, Andrew, anything on? I would agree with, with both of you, and I'm encouraged by the mitigation plan that's in place, as, as well as some of the incentive programs that you discussed in the parking plan for folks who do take uh, alternative transportation they drive or take the bus. I think that's, that's good. Andy? I'm good with all that. Um, mitigation gets into the special permit as a condition. I would add shared parking and good. Christine brought up the railroad lot should be in there. Um, review of mitigation measures may be uh, take, uh, uh, a review of those measures may be undertaken by the board within a year of the opening of the restaurant. Mm. What does that mean? And then you can come back and tell them all the wonderful things you did. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. But but so you did. Hopefully you would come in and get experience it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But I think that's just I'm, a, I'm a, a line that if we are able to make a deal with Oh, yeah. Egg or plate. oh yeah, and and those agreements register uh, a copy of those agreements with the building uh, department. If you make an agreement with, oh, yeah. you know, um, it's as much for us to be able to see those how those things are working. So you, right, I understand. So, so we can use you as a model kind of citizen. Mm -hmm. Certainly, send us a letter and tell us this. That's yeah. cool. That's fine. That's probably the best. Yeah. I'm open. Have you guys want to come and just ask? Well, they want to come here. I'm saying. <laughs> I think we'll even be okay if you want to just send us a letter <laughs> okay. to, it, to Carol that she can then pass on to us. Um, Carol, anything before I? Uh, I think it all sounds good. I, I would only caution that you um, be sure that your special conditions are enforceable. Just or that you word them in a way where the, the enforcement is compulsory. Um, or, or based on a performance, some kind of performance requirements so that you you just want to put something in there that no one's going to be able to enforce. Right. Uh, the it, notion of, of having um, some standards or practices that are encouraged is a good one. I think it can be included in the findings, but uh, I don't know how you could make a condition, the, the permit condition contingent on something that's encouraged. Right. How would you fix that? What? How would you? No, no, I don't think we can fix the encouraging one. Oh, but, you, but I do think that the question is more around the parking. <laughs> it's kind of a new realm, right? We've got a lot of social media type of parking mitigation tasks, and I don't see why that couldn't be included as conditions to this uh, special permit. How can you compel that he or or someone else who would um, under yeah. who would assume the special permit would oh, carry those yeah. out? Yeah. Well, maybe it could happen, but it's could you could you compel the them to? officer has to be able to enforce that. Could you compel them to keep a sign that says where the parking is? We can. I think we can compel them to do something on their building or their pro property. Okay, but. We can't compel them to do how they run their business. something, e either how they run their business or having signage on public property that could potentially be with withheld by whoever issues that. Oh, yeah, no, I wasn't that. thinking with respect okay. to the public property. I'm actually more thinking about the emails and uh, websites and that type of thing. So, it's just a, an area that the zoning enforcement officer right. really has no, no say yeah. or no, well, well, no, no ability well, no to. Prior um, right. experience. I, I don't know if that's something that... So... It'd be easy to monitor, though. I mean, so let's talk... To check up on it. Yeah, hold on with that. It'd be easier than going out there. You can <laughs> go to the website and you pretend you're booking something and see what happens. Especially <laughs> 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 
new. I mean, it is. So it's an area to explore. But I do think it's important. That's the fun part. I would. Oh, I agree. <laughs> no, but this is that. I think it might learn to do it. Something yeah. that people's it's a good business. Correct. It should be something you encourage people to do. So if they come before you guys for something that they they've done against the law, we're up, you right up to them. That's the only way I figure that you guys probably can get to. Right. We're we're running behind, so I kind of want to keep moving here. So so let's talk about the conditions with respect to parking that we've talked about so far. Uh, first one that I've heard, um, and it's not a condition, but I would like the record to show that the railroad lot was included in the total for the board's analysis. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing I heard uh, is an actual condition, which is um, the two on-site spaces shall be maintained. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I was thinking or. Um, otherwise obtained uh, or to the extent not available replaced, uh, replaced uh, right by two uh, other uh, I guess we would say privately owned yeah mm -hmm. property okay mm -hmm. on-site spaces shall be maintained or to the extent such spaces are not available You'll get that to me later? Yep. Okay. Hair under? You can add a hair under. I got a hair under there. <laughs> I like the hair under. I'm very illegal. Thank you. Um, okay. That's the second one. So then I go into um, yeah. I go into the customer parking. Um, I love this stuff. I'm just trying to figure out how we make it a condition. Um, Can I back up yeah. a little bit? Um, go back to the kind of the fundamental. The, the 200 seat mm -hmm. um, is the board accepting that that's the going to so be the 100 capacity for the 196. The Sorry, that's a great point, Carol. Oh, we're going to do 196. So, in respect to this, we're talking about 196. And I, I'm sorry, I thought I said that at the beginning. My bad. 196 um, total for the business. 190, 196 for the business. And it's going to be um, set forth as, um, I have it right here, two seconds ago, of course. Um, that's going to be oh, no, 106 in the front of the house and 90. In the function room. And may I suggest that um, you s simply add that subject to review to, uh, for building code compliance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Inspector mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what we assume that that would meet, but you right. just don't want to have to have the yeah, applicant come back if it doesn't. Yeah. So. And so that's actually going to be A700 as uh, changed tonight, right? So it's this, it's this A700. Mm -hmm. Is that what plan sheet A700 plan, plan sheet A700 with the only change being that at 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 96, uh, I'm sorry, the 94 in the back. But where on this plan does it say What, 94? So places. Yeah. It says 106 up front. I don't have my reading glasses, but yeah. I can yeah, barely make it out right there. Yeah. It says it here and it says it here. And it says 94 in the back, but we're changing that to 90. Can I get a full size of this for the file? Yeah. I emailed you the PDF. I can print it out. The biggest my print will okay. go is. Yeah, I should yeah. Okay, so. I have some. Yeah, okay. So the one I'm looking at is A700, and that's going to be with the following changes. Do you want to say the issue date? Issue date 819, uh, yeah, 2013. Oh, there it is. Issued. Yep, thanks. Yep. <laughs> okay. Three o'clock. Yep, issued. Uh, I just need to get glasses on. I have them. Um, yeah, so that's 106 in the front of the house, 90 in the rear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, right near the back of the um, diagram, as well as in the little box. Uh, little box is the little box says 94 seats yeah. in private dining. That should be changed to 90, and then the total. A couple of yeah, yeah, right. indoor seating. Okay. Someone's got to look at this in two years and be able to read this and understand it. They're going to redo it and send you the corrected copy. Okay. They're not. We're we're doing this okay. with the expectation that the applicant is going to provide us with the corrected copy. Why don't you make the text larger also, like you did on this text, so it's readable. Yeah. Like just have them make this Much. larger, have them make that larger, then we can all read it easier. And the next people can read it easier. All the all the seating count stuff on this little chart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it is easy to miss. So, so long as what comes back comports to that, then I think we can replace this A700 with that. No? I'm not sure w where we're headed with this, so I'm just going hey, with, with the minute. current. He wants, he wants a final plan showing the numbers we're doing today, so in the future. So that it's a clean copy. So are they coming back? No. No. Um, just gonna gonna no, it's yeah. just a clean copy so that okay. we're not dealing with a markup. Okay. Well. And it's subject sure to back, the building safe, permit but. approval. Also. Mm -hmm. right. right. Yeah. That revised plan will be subject it's to the building permit. Right. You see, it's okay today. I don't know why they call it. Which it is. I don't know that. Uh, well, I guess we do put that in. Yeah, we, we, have, we, have some, we have some standard that we should put in. Right? We do for standard uh, conditions. Uh, yeah. Part one through seven standard conditions. Right. Okay. I'm pretty sure that. That we can actually look at the old special permit because yeah. I think that has oh, all yeah. seven yeah. of them. Specifications as approved by the ARB shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with applications and building permits for the project. There shall be no deviation during construction from the approved plan and sheet specs without the express written approval of the ARB. Yeah. Is that, 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 that's that what we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We'll get you those final plans. Okay. Hopefully tomorrow. Yeah. I think we all understand what the final plans. Well, the, we are going to approve this one. It has to be exactly yeah. like this. Right. Just three changes. Three changes. Ninety, ninety, one ninety-six. Three is this one. Oh yeah, the one with the So we're going to use all of these. Yeah. Okay. All of these. Okay. So standard conditions as well. Except six isn't standard for municipal trash pickup. Because I brought that up. There is no municipal yeah, trash pickup. That doesn't, that doesn't work so we could just reference the bylaws for noise and all of that stuff. Right. For trash Okay. Um, Back to conditions. Right now, I've got the two on-site spaces. I've got the uh, standard conditions with respect to building inspector, etc. Um, the shared parking. Um, Are we still on the mitigation plan? Yeah, I mean, once again, I don't think we can put any encouragement into the special permit. Right. What are we going to do with the parking mitigation? So the parking mitigation plan, uh, I'm, I'm, up for, I, I'm up for... Uh, um, I don't know yet. I'm up for... I think that what we're trying to say is that they will, they will um, endeavor to abide by the, uh, or to implement the mitigation measures as listed and attached to the special permit. And I would add to those the shared parking yeah. so that, that you retype it and add the shared parking so that all the mitigations are in one spot. Or do you want to leave shared parking out? Well, I think you mean shared parking is in the Jam and Java? Yeah. Add or the playtime. 
or but any I other. Don't, that, that should be out. That shouldn't be in mitigations, right? That should be a separate. It's a private arrangement. Yeah. It's a private yeah. arrangement. Okay, okay. let's I stick with know. the mitigations for a second. How right. Do you want to attach them to this special? Program? I would love to attach it. That, and, that's what I'm saying. And say, so, uh, you know, customer parking, one through seven. But I, uh, I, I have to make it a condition, right, to attach it. Yeah, I think yeah, so. But the question so. is, can we attach social media stuff? Well, then, I mean, then it'd be nice to attach the why, parking why not? Well, well, what we can well, do no, is we can make it a special well, condition. Of that the, uh, I'm sorry, well, but, but just well, the, 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 the parking oh, analysis is what we used in our decision. Right. What we're trying to do now is set out what they're supposed yeah, to do as a condition to us providing them with this special permit. The parking, so the private sharing, I, you know, we have no plan in front of us with respect to that, so I don't think we can either approve. You can approve or disapprove the application because they haven't done that. But I don't think that what we're doing here is within the special permit itself encouraging that they go out and do that. I mean, either we're going to approve the application or we're going to wait until they do that. Until they, or we're going to wait until they go out and find that private sharing, if that's what the board so decides. Do you, know, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you understand that, Carol? We're, you we're, not, saying, Christy, we're not saying they have to. On that? We're saying that the enhancements are. We um, want them to do these yeah. things. And we're saying we, they we have to. The board expects, yeah, these things we have, they yeah, have to. Right. Do. So the short that's all I'm they saying. don't have to, but we're strongly encouraging it. You could put that in as a condition that we that, that uh, they, they are encouraged to provide uh, shared parking arrangements. And I don't parking. think we can do we the encourage. Do we can say you have to get shared parking right. if that's the requirement of this board. Then, you then, know, and they will about, or will not. And well, it's, it's out of their, their hands. It's so, a it's a loose cannon because so they can't it, that's what force I'm saying, a private the, owner to share. Put right. it with the uh, yeah. with the uh, the mitigations. Then it's all part of a package that they're no because we're we're offering. saying that they have to do these mitigations and, they, and these are within their purview to do we, no, I see. Yeah. no i get it i get it it's it's not you, you can't yeah you can't yeah. make your if you can't make the arrangement then it's yeah. the, the mechanics of this are typically the special permit is issued it's recorded then the applicant goes with their building permit and the special permit and brings that to inspectional services so that inspect the building inspector can then see what's required, and that's where it gets enforced. Mm -hmm. uh, for, and that's where you have your leverage to implement some of these things uh, before a certificate of occupancy is issued. Once the certificate of occupancy is issued, then that's where the enforcement, you want to have some me mechanism if possible. So someone earlier said that they would ask the applicant possibly to return in a year to say right. how the um, mitigation measures are working, but you don't have a, you, you don't have anything compulsory. I'm trying to put point. something in there like that, that says so they have to come back and report on the success of. And they could update or, us on share A couple ways you could do it, which one is rather, rather extreme in this instance, and that is a, some type of a performance escrow or something. You could do it. It's not out of realm of past practice. <coughs> you could potentially link it to your review of next year's outdoor seating application for the board selectman possibly, that they would first have to return and inform you of how that's working. The thing is, once the real difficulty is, if you determine that it's not working, oh well, you can't revoke the special permit, there are an operating restaurant, but there's really no latitude of so it's more a check-in, but, but you just need to understand and be able to communicate in the condition to the enforcement officer what your expectations are. If you don't expect that action can be taken in the event that the implementation steps aren't working or weren't implemented, then you want to communicate that. If you do, you need to make it clear and, and somehow come up with something that would allow enforcement. Yeah, we have to be an escrow. I, I think the problem we have on the mitigation is separate enforcement. Um, I feel so strongly like, enough that we should do something. But I think that we can make it a special condition of the permit that we require the parking communication plan to be implemented. Mm -hmm. um, I understand 
you know, getting our building inspector to look at the menu and say, is there really a little, you know, a thing I can, a little app on there that I can put on my phone and find the parking? And it would be unusual, but still, okay. I think, you know, putting it so in that, that the parking so plan has to be there, I think, is a good thing. It's enforceable by his ticket writing authority. Right. Mm -hmm. So dollars a day, you don't have it. Right. So yeah. specifically though, I think what he could yes. check on, okay, as I'm going it. through the different points here, are one through four on the customer uh, parking as I look at it. Um, drop down tab on website directing customers, uh, that, that is reviewable. All emails from Carmel will feature a where to park legend below the signature line. That obviously is easy enough. Um, common ground brochures, pamphlets, takeout, and website printable menus will feature where to park section. Great. Um, four, all functions event room will also include the where to park section and the website address, parking down trap. The, I'm sorry, one through five, I may have said one through four. The proposed menu board will also have a section upon it directing customers with a map. I think the tougher ones are six and seven. But he can call and see what the response is. That's easy to check. It's a phone call. Okay. I just think it's a little... I just think that one's a little little harder, um, and, and I think it also seven has a little gotcha thing. You know, if the well, receptionist like the forgets license. to say one time, yeah. oh, you know, by the way, Park and Russell Common, and, and you know, yeah, it'll yeah. be they're posted right where they can see it and read it, but necessarily with yeah, I mean, servers might read it to them. If there's like you know, a customer standing in front of a uh, okay. receptionist, frankly, and the phone to rings. To be honest, and, you know, frankly, I think it's, it's a little unfair to the building inspector. I mean, okay. forgetting about okay. everything else. Christine, I don't yeah, think that's... Yeah, it's fine for that. Yeah, I don't it's, think not it's, realistic. it's not You're realistic right. and it's not fair. I agree. I, agree. I mean, agree. you know, okay, okay. we're pushing them on the first <laughs> five. And then obviously seven, we certainly hope that you work cooperatively cooperatively yeah. with the Arlington Center Merchants Group. Yeah. That, that, that will be hard to get permission. So I would say that it's, it's, it's really numbers one through five mm -hmm. in the customer parking uh, under the mitigation plan that we would like to um, yeah, attach and include. Not seven. This condition. Well, again, it's work cooperatively. It's work cooperatively. Like, it, once again, you, you got to remember it's, it, that the, the, the building inspector needs to be able to write a ticket on it. Well, can't we attach this whole thing and then say that one through five that yeah, is enforceable? We still attach all of Yeah, we're going to okay. either attach the whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sections one through five. Yeah, we can do that. And, and, and that way the, people will have it in. Well, can we put the whole uh, memo in here? Yeah, because the first part also applies. Just reference one through five. Uh, I actually don't like that because then it shows that we don't care about any of the other things that we're saying. Uh, well, it shows respond. we do because we put them in there at least. And I'd like to say that we considered all of them and certainly wanted to do all those things. Right. But how will they know what they are if we don't Well, I actually it? look, well, maybe it's the way I play, but it, like I, if, <laughs> if I've got one through five that I have to do, and those are the only things that I mentioned that I have to do, it means I don't have to do any of the others, right? In other words, I'd rather have this be a part of the record. Mm -hmm. that we're deciding on, that all these things are great and we want them to do all of them, mm -hmm. than to point out exactly the ones that they So, have. So why don't you just take out six if that's the one that's bothering you? Well, I think I was also thinking about like the one through three and, and mm -hmm. the, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm we're, Well, we're already, I, back, I, we're talking about the one through three. We've already hit on the, the first one about the... Right, I don't think any of the other three, I don't think any of these three go into the conditions. I think we hit the one that we could, which is the two on site park. And right. Right. You know, number two is an encouragement, right? Yeah. Uh, so the employee use of public transport. I mean, same. Uh, yeah, it's basically talking about closing hours. And we're going to talk we about closing hours in right. another part of the SP. Exactly. So that's exactly. Yeah. Agreed. And then one through five is enforceable. Yeah. Six and seven are not really no. enforceable. And then we can get to the sound mediation plan. Okay. But <laughs> so, so my thought, my thought was to carve them out and attach them. Okay. Versus putting the whole memo in. But I'm I'm amenable to putting the whole memo and referencing these five if folks. Oh, feel you more mean the entire thing, including right? Something. No, no. Just take the just, just parking just rip mitigation. Out one through five. Take all the parking mitigation. Right. <laughs> And just attach it as one through condition. three and one through seven. Right. Well, no, Andy, because uh, two and three under employee commuting and parking, and six and seven under customer parking are not really conditions that could be enforced. Once so again, it's, it's you put it. I mean, if you put it in the special permit, it's a paper toothless tiger. Okay? 
So the notion would be to, to pull out one through five within the conditions of the special permit um, and pull them out as an attachment and say as the condition that the um, applicant will abide by uh, the parking mitigation as set forth in Exhibit A. Or will comply with. And this whole thing will just be in under discussion, you said? It'll be... I, no, it'll be under. It'll, under special, it'll be conditions. under special conditions at the end of the uh, at the end of the decision. The memorandum, it, every document that they hand you for your review is listed and okay. in, at the top of your special permit decision. Yep. It's all incorporated by reference. If you want to turn some of those points into special conditions, you can do that. Right. But be assured that this will be part of the record. It's directly cited at the top of the decision. the applicant to comply with the parking uh, mitigation action set forth in set Exhibit A. Exhibit A will have numbers one through five under customer parking. Utility services. Um, comply with the noise abatement and, and uh, requirements. And do we have a usual? Well, no, but the applicant has told us that this would be a uh, rubberized lid, uh, so uh, okay. a non metal lid. Plastic, plastic thank you. Um, and located as uh, far away from the lot line. Uh, they can be, possibly can be, and that um, the applicant is going to ensure, or uh, certainly not the right word, but work together with the other uh, adjacent business owners with, with regard to hours of pickup. Mm -hmm. uh, what about we, that all trash generated? It's going to be what? No, fine, see what they do. Uh, that yeah. was detailed in that, uh, that you had a paragraph about that. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, number, page okay. three, number five. Yeah. You can actually put that in there, I guess, if you want. This one, non recyclable refuse from the restaurant, restaurant lead dumps or disposed of. Oh, under the sound This right. whole thing should be put in. Yeah, and six, too. And that's the noise bylaw yeah. to okay. reference. Okay, number uh, with other businesses. Um, it's actually a number of five on this is sound Five Sound Okay. Five and six, right? Yeah. Six is community contact so the neighbors can. Well, yeah, I don't think that's. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. we can enforce the fact that he'll provide a letter, contact okay. information. Okay, so five and six. And five and six. Okay. Okay. So under question for you though, before you start that, yeah. you always consider neighbors in the sense of just a bunch of others. I have a bunch. Okay. I don't know if it's a whole neighborhood. Okay. Um, so that is EDR six. EDR seven advertising features. Um, the sign is. As presented 
on. And I have this next to, this is also used for um, hold on. Uh, EDR2, relation of the building to the environment, as well as EDR7, I would reference the exterior perspective provided on 7-12-2013 from Connor Architecture. With down lights. Yeah, it's, it's two sheets, that's right. It's we got an update to this, didn't we? At the yeah. Oh, did we? Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it has the okay. same date, because I had all these. Good. This one, you gave us an update. I had all these questions, but your update answered it. Okay. So I think the date. Yeah, that's why I'm including this one. But, it has an but that doesn't have all the words. Oh, it doesn't everything. have the. It has an elevation after the. There was a. Uh, here it is. It's dated. This is proper. Issued, issue date. <laughs> Well, no, it changed. Like on this one. See the lights were below, so this is this is the property. The lights are above. Right, and you have your insignia more in the middle of the of the awning. Okay, you're right. That is the right one. Okay, so that's the right one. Yep, it is. Seven twelve. The old one had no issue date. A two hundred. A two hundred. Exterior elevation. Okay, so that's for that's for EDR two and EDR seven. Seven So you're gonna reference this and the illustration? Is that the illustration? Yeah, is that all part of it? Yeah, that, that's, yeah that's, that's just a big black one. Oh yeah. Black 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 one. Yeah. yeah. So that's part of it. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the same as you have this. Yeah. The exterior like perspective you can Yeah, I know, but let me take this one. Oh. But just in your naming, this is extra elevation, this is extra perspective, the title. Same date. Okay, any uh, comments on the uh, advertising features? The only thing that, okay. I, I, I'm, uh, this is uh, belt and suspenders, but just to say the, the lighting will be downlit. Mm -hmm. I know it's shown on the, the plan, yeah. 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 but the original had it uplit just to. So you want that as a condition? Uh, We've yeah. done it before. Yep. That's yeah. a condition. That's uh, as shown mm -hmm. on A200. Be downlit. Oh, okay. Next. Uh, EDR8, special features, exposed storage areas, exposed machinery, insulation, service areas, truck loading, and subject to such setbacks, screen plantings, or other screening materials. Um, actually, I think I'd like to talk about the soundproofing, maybe in here. Uh, yeah. I think this might be the best place for us to uh, reference. Uh, we could do it there. Um, noise isn't mentioned in the Yeah, I guess that's. Ex I guess. I guess it is probably better at the um, uh, relation of the building to the environment. So, in addition on EDR two to A two hundred, I think we should also be referencing um, the. Oh my gosh, where's the same? This one. There it is. A300. A300. So as a special condition. Under EDR. I guess we don't have to say what the special condition is in respect of. But EDR, under EDR2, special condition. Mitigation. Mm -hmm. and, and add the sound mitigation items. Yeah. Do that, can we can we enforce any of those stuff? Uh, uh, I was just reading you know, through. I, was just at yeah. I think I think, it, I think we've already added one of them with the non-metal lid under EDR six. Okay. Yeah. We did. So I think we're Number good five on. Five and six are added. We're good on that. Um, one is the plan. Basically, think, it's the same. I think one is the one that we're gonna yeah. uh, that we're gonna talk about. I mean, I, I think. I think if we're going to write a note to the selectmen, I think it would be very good for us to include uh, two through four as the basis on which we yeah. have made our decision. 
And you don't want to put those in as... Well, I think we could put four in. I mean, uh, no, I'm afraid of music with the exception of standard restaurant background music will be ready. That's and enforceable. No karaoke will be ready. There will be no outdoor speakers. The building inspector could enforce those, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, so under EDR2, special need to follow the sound mitigation. Um, Can you enforce the rails? Details set forth. Just to wear the jazz band is located. In document A300. Okay, and then the next one is going to be 7, condition. No uh, amplified music. Exception. Okay, so copy number four of the sound mitigation plan as a condition. Okay. And the first thing I was wondering, maybe we could put three in as well. Even. You know, three I, is I a really, location in I the really feel like we're getting into the into, in my own view, and let's yeah. let's talk about it. But we're really getting into the entertainment license to some extent as to what's what and everything else, right? Who's giving that enforcement? Yeah. yeah. And once again, I'm happy to include in our you know, comment to the, comment to the Board of Selectmen that this played an important part in our thinking. Okay. As long as it gets to them. Because yeah. it was part of our decision, right? They promised to characterize what this function room would be. Yes, yeah, restaurant. Correct. Right. You know, well, as an aside, I plan as part of my submission to them to give them this mitigation plan. Okay, keep going. <laughs> so that brings us about to E D R eight. Uh, no, nine. nine. Safe safety. Uh, to protect person safety, all open and closed. Our police. Wait, were there any control. other special features? There's nothing else that they oh, added to the room. Ventilation roof. system on E D R. Ventilation eight, on eight. Right. We did Sorry. talk a little bit about the uh, got the, one the ventilation uh, system, but the uh, kitchen exhaust, filter. exhaust system. The exhaust system. Yeah. yeah. You can say it's approved as presented. Okay. Okay. And loading. Loading. What loading? I don't know. Carol's note says additional details on ventilation system and loading. What's loading? The well, it's really just under the trucks go down the back. Yeah. Oh, supply. you are talking about that kind of loading. Right, and, and in the um, last hearing, in last meeting, he said that he would not have delivery trucks coming in. Right, he would have gone street the back, and that's all the delivery right. trucks were going out. Oh, yeah, no, I was going to win that. But that's a, you know, is that you know, is that written somewhere? In yes. Into the drive. Yes, yes. he has no reason why they would. But should we write that down? Yeah, you can make a special condition saying that all deliveries shall be by uh, the driveway off what is it all I would actually say that every word of this is there. I mean, just say off street. Well, Mac Truck, man. Well, not do donuts. Quincy, why not? All delivery will be off street. Off street. Down, off street. From the street. Off of the street. Yeah, off street. Okay. At reasonable hours or the bylaw hours? Yeah, I don't think we have to say when the bylaw says it's going to be. Yeah, that makes sense. Just whatever. Right. right, just to reference the bylaw. Yeah. Should we reference the bylaw? Because it's just like the trash pickup. If it happens in the middle of the night, yeah. nobody will be here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> True, but yes. Yeah. But that could happen. Yeah, and now? And okay. it would be noisy. Okay. Continuing on. Number 10. Yeah. Number 10. Heritage. Expect our license heritage. Removal of disruption. Uh, however, little or no evidence remains of any original report can find the state standard is met. Any comments? I totally agree with that. Microclimate, uh, no new structures, new hard service, ground coverage, and new machinery. Um, are any questions or comments on that? Uh, this is where a karaoke machine was noted. So maybe this is where sound should be. It mentions noise Micro here. Microclimate, noise, and temperature levels. What you put under number two should maybe be put under number 11. Okay. Under two, EDR 11. Under EDR 11, special condition to follow sound mitigation. Okay. All right. 12. Uh, sustainable building and site design. Uh, projects are encouraged. They've not presented anything. Uh, for us to uh, they could say uh, at the building, when the building permit is issued, you will issue 
a list to the building department. Just so we know for the record. Of one. Of the one. lead, the Measure, lead measures taken. objectives. Okay. Our checklist. Yeah. I'm already doing it, so we can. It's a great yeah. community. It's nice to keep track of what's green just about it. Just have to say you've addressed it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every one. Like I said, I'm already doing it, so no big deal. It's just great. making a copy and saying it. Issue to building yeah, permit. Yeah, it's easy to fill up. Building permit. One issue of building permit. Okay. Uh, submitted to the building department. Okay. Um, 11 6 the request of you shall not impair the integrity or character of the district or adjoining districts, nor be detrimental to the health, morals, and welfare. Um, I have nothing in addition to add to this. Anyone else? No, I think actually the special conditions we've already highlighted. Um, All go. They, they, they address many of the concerns that you have raised under that. This 10.11A6. So yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so are we repeating what Carol has typed to already, or we're not putting any of that paragraph? No, I, I think so that's not what goes into the special permit. This is just Carol's like notes to kind of notes memorandum to us. Kind of what we should consider and that type of thing. Um, the notion is is that right now I've got 11 special conditions. Those kind of all as a as a whole go to go to this particular one. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. And then uh, 11A7, the requested use will not by its addition to a neighborhood cause an excess of a particular use that could determine the character of said neighborhood. I think the cafes and restaurants are indeed um, common to Mass Ave. And, uh, but there's nothing exactly like no. around in the no, vicinity. So mm -hmm. it is a an addition that's different from the per other restaurant uses prevails. Correct. Yes. It's the opposite of yeah. being an excess. Yeah. I don't know what I did with my uh, my big special condition now. Oh, did you take it from me? Did yeah. I? Because the last one was, uh, the last special condition is the one that I wrote up in respect of the function room. Do you have something on that one? Uh, that the function room would be used for special function events only, but not as part of day-to-day -day restaurant use uh, without reopening the special permit. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's, okay, so, actually, let's make that number one. Okay. That's number one. Um, Carol, I don't know where you would, I've got it under my special conditions and it's not, so, but the railroad lot included in total for the board's analysis. I don't know where we might be able to put that in as a notation. Into the, the findings? Into the findings, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. It, so let's just make sure that we work that into it. I mean, no. Okay, great. Um, so then, uh, the special conditions that I have with respect to this are, number one, the one that Bruce just read with respect to the function room. Two, two on-site spaces shall be maintained to the extent such spaces are not available to the applicant, two private spaces shall be maintained here under. Okay. We require the applicant, number three, we require the applicant to comply with the parking mitigation actions, actions set forth in Exhibit A. With Exhibit A having numbers one through five under the customer parking mitigation plan. Okay. Three. That was three. Oh, sorry. I apologize. Four, non metal lid on dumpster as far as possible from the lot line. And then we're going to steal, sorry, I'm just going to it, number five from the sound mitigation plan. This one already says in a dumpster with a plastic cover. Okay, so, great. so we, we don't need the first then. part. Yeah. Uh, uh, so in the rear gonna, of the building, so we're gonna as far say, from the property okay, line also. So we're going to just crib number five. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and Number six, although we may have to do some. No, I think number six. Yeah, so numbers five and six are now uh, a special condition. Uh, number four, A and B. Okay. And Carol, I'll get this to you. Okay. Um, 
the fifth condition, uh, condition that the sign, uh, as shown on A200, be downlit. Just sign as per A200, all lighting down, all, all lighting down light. All yeah. Lighting okay. shall all be down light. Whatever the right. <laughs> There's not sound right things in the ground. No, no. Down lighting only. Down yeah. lighting only. Thank you. It takes a model over. Okay, yeah. Sign is <laughs> shall be as per drawing. Down lighting. A200. A200 and. With down lighting only. Down lighting only, thank you. As shown on each other with down lighting only. Yep. We will have to run it this way. Okay. We've got a lot to do. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Under uh, number six, under EDR 11, uh, special condition to follow the sound mitigation details set forth in document A300. So that's the soundproofing. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's and condition. which ones are these? Oh, just the document. You don't want to add any of this. Uh, okay, that was in a separate one. We did that already. Yeah, okay. You, you didn't get item number four. Oh, so that's number seven. Okay, yeah, so, goes, so we got the document, yeah, got then condition number seven, no, uh, we're going to copy number four of the sound mitigation. Right. Okay. That's going to be condition number seven for sound mitigation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Condition eight, ventilation to be done as presented in the plan. Okay. Uh, number nine, well, does it talk about deliveries in the rear? No, it doesn't. So number nine is all deliveries to be done off street at times in accordance with the bylaw. And number ten, provide a lead checklist at time of issuance of building permit. Lead checklist to the building department. To the to the planning department. Or submit a submit a lead checklist to planning department. Time of issuance of building permit. Okay, those are the ten. There's one more. Which is? Well, I don't know if this is one of them, but um, Andy's suggestion of a yearly review on the parking mitigation. What does that mean? Oh. Yeah. Um, you put that somewhere, right? Is that under finance? Review? Is that? Well, yeah. in a year, he was going to come back and tell us, give us an update, a letter. He's going to give us a letter. I mean, Did we write that somewhere? Or? We didn't write that down anywhere. It's, it would have to go it's in not, there. See, the special permit is goes with the land, and so it's it's got to be things that not only he can do, but the next person can do. Is that under findings, then? Like we, we, we did you that can in, say it in the decision. We did that in number Yeah, the CBS. expectations. Well, CBS, though, we also had an escrow. I remember they were going to look at We asked them to. Uh, I mean, traffic yeah, that's mitigation. Right. That's yeah. right. So we asked them to report on that. Right, and then we gave them back the escrow only, no, I'm sorry, we didn't. We kept the escrow and just used it for other things, right? I think. <laughs> no, don't say it that Let's way, Mike. That. <laughs> no, no, that's not what we did at all. <laughs> we well, used you were chairman, so yeah. we can explain. Yeah. Well, well, let's not get into what we okay. did. Actually, yeah. I was chairman, but we used it all up. Yeah. Uh, so, but the, but, but the point is, there for, was something that needed did. to be done. Right. That there right. was then something well, there was some relevant financial. yeah there was well, some relevant mitigation or or thing that would then happen here we don't have that unless we chose to do so which i would not be in favor of any kind of escrow in respect to the parking but but um the the fact is is I, i'm not sure that the i think working it into that into the decision that this was part of the process is a good thing but i'm not i'm not terribly sure it works as a condition mm -hmm. to the special right. So some program. more we need to work it in. It was part of the process and we're expecting yeah. that to happen. Yeah. That's right. We that's, my, that's, that's my view. Mm -hmm. But, so but it doesn't we, rise to the level of being a special condition. Okay. So where do we work that in? I, Just so we don't forget it. Well, the decision will have. Are you work it in somewhere? The parking implement the parking mitigation plan? No. 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 The idea that they would report is in a certain period of time on the progress of their you mitigation. You can put that into the findings as well. Findings. You can't enforce it, but it's a, oh, it can go into the findings. Mm -hmm. 
Um, one other thing that we talked about, I don't know if it's a special condition, but the submission of a updated uh, season plan, right? But uh, yeah, that follows exactly. That follows right, but it shows the correct number of seats yeah, yes. in the front of the house, the back of the house. The we we mentioned that some of it. Right? Well, I don't know. If we, don't we, know is it a special condition, or I mean, it is in the sense that because we're giving that presumptuous, but if we vote in favor of granting a special permit, okay. they've got the, the applicant has the permit, right? Isn't okay. that under so, the standard special condition so no, that we're including? Uh, no, no, it's just an update do. of it. So, so let's just do... Uh, okay. Final plans and specifications, we could put it into this campaign. By then it shall be final plans submitted to the voting inspector. It's the uh, can I we add it into this? Yeah, it tells the number of seats. Yeah, to correct it's it's unusual to See, personally, I think we're voting on it uh, all marked up, Bruce. Yeah. And if so we're able to, if too. we're able to switch it out, okay. get a clean one. Yeah. Then that that's would be great. nice. Yeah. That would be nice. Okay. So you but I think we're actually I'm approving. I'll talk to her tomorrow. No, 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 no. That's okay. But I think I think we're actually approving one that's marked up. Okay. But as a as an administrative matter. Yeah, just so in the future we'll be able to read really Exactly. As an okay. administrative matter, I think we're going to look for got a clean So we can I use this it. standard. Yeah. Yeah, I think. And and then all of the additional, um, uh, all of the additional uh, in, in usual uh, special conditions. Okay. That we include. So that's, I think, everything. I think yes. so. Let's, if we can just take a quick look at the original special permit because as long as we have Christine we just had it open and we've talked about item six from that not really being applicable anymore the petitioner uses municipal trash pickup all trash etc yeah. we, we referenced this one which covers all of that pretty much yeah in accordance with noise abatement or Oops. article 12 section 18 of the town bylaws this yeah. is Title Five, Article Twelve, Noise Abatement. Is that the same section? Yeah. I. Um, I don't. You know, I, I can't remember what they, what that refers to in the town bylaw. Feasible. The same trash pickup company will be, that company has, will be instructed um, to keep. Times of times are allowed to use heavy equipment, which okay. dumpster emptying trucks fall under. Okay. okay. It's very specific, and it falls within. Definition of heavy equipment. Okay. So it, it's in not here. It's in the town. Yeah, it's not. Um, um, is there anything else that I mean? Are all those other conditions? I guess all those other conditions that were in the original special uh, permit would be still reduced. relevant. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. so. I think all the all the additional yeah. ones that are in the original come forward. Thank you, sir. The original. Step number three, final specifications for signs. So I guess, yeah, that should come before us, right, the final? Or do we just see the final? You just saw it. I think we just saw it. You saw it. So maybe we don't need number three. It doesn't hurt, though. It's redundant, but... Well, let's just go through them quick. Uh, okay, one Young stays. Utilities. Yeah. One stays, two stays. I think three does go away if we approve it. Four. Uh, so yep, four. Final plans, especially we approved by the residents, shall be the final plans. Five stays in. And six does not stay in, correct? Yep. Okay. okay, so we got one, two, four, and five come into the as, as additional. Okay. Okay. So those are the special conditions um, that we've talked about tonight. Any comment questions? Okay. You want to watch it? Yeah. Um, I'll move that we grant the applicant a special permit as requested, uh, subject to the 14 special conditions that the chair has articulated. Yep. A second? Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, let me take down this Charles one here, which moved. Christine. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, see ya. Let me uh, thank you. take a one-minute break here. I want just to see if I can see who's still here.
to get across the water. You're winning. Thank you guys. Yeah. 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 Good luck. Thank you. It will be now, I was going to ask you if you, as a special condition, Bob, are you going to be showing ESL games on yes. television? Yes. That's fine. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, I'll yeah, be showing games, okay. but I guarantee you, Do you want all the other games okay? will be on okay. screen <laughs> during the day. We have like, like, like today's game and stuff. I mean, you have them all. Like, thank you for handing And I hope you're going to look okay. into that okay. job friendly. Yeah. 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 I do it Sundays, and now I'm all set. I told you I did. On Sundays, people bring the dog out back and on the patio. Oh, cool. oh, but you can do it inside. Sorry for taking you know, it out. Like, yeah. yeah. No, they're the winners in Rosalind. Yeah, it's actually today. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hold on, baby. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, no, cut me. That'd be great if you could. That's great. That's great. That's what we want to do. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, we'll need, yeah, we'll need to get this written and, and signed so you guys can just keep your ears out. You're, not, you're gone after four minutes. I will leave tomorrow morning for you to act by. Yeah, that's what happens when you die. No, um, it's, uh, <laughs> no, that's the dream plan. A week in a day. So, I'm back on the Wednesday the 28th. Oh, okay, okay, great. We might need you almost right away. Oh, I okay, thought Jake so, was Well, well my laptop's oh. going with me. So, you don't want to come up? I'll be out on a Monday, but that's it. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, Andrew, you're around here before the 30th? I'm here, yes. Okay, great. Andy, you're just, you've got your usual travel as far as getting assigned in I'm also, I'm around. Okay, so, so you'll, you'll get something. I'm here except for Wednesdays. Okay, perfect. Okay, okay. So, not my girl, but it's the one that you, the one about the one. Oh, yours. Yeah, okay. 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 I, first off, want to apologize for going so late. So it just seemed like a just seemed like a great part. Um, Carol, do you want to introduce me? It might be the best thing. Act, yeah, I'm just I, I want to uh, make sure I oh, put Bruce? the note to file the decision. Okay, great. Before just to make sure I get it in the calendar, so we don't. Okay, our next agenda item is um, to talk about Sims Affordable Housing, the condo documents, and an introduction to attorney uh, Edith Netter. So um, I'm going to let uh, okay. Carol just do a quick intro. Do the, best way. Uh, the condo documents for Arlington 360 were provided by Goldston Stores. Uh, Edith Netter has been on um, on retainer for the town, more or less, for reviewing affordable housing components, as she has done for um, for Sims. Uh, Bruce and Edie met last week together to review um, what aspects of the condo docs Edie would handle, and, and most of that would be handled by Bruce. Um, Edie will, have a, however, tell you a little bit about how the affordable housing components are um, cited and protected, uh, the degree which they are cited um, or protected in here, I believe, but also to talk about the um, the regulatory agreement. There's not much to say, but I'll let I'll e let Edie um, give you a status report and then um, DHCD's uh, approval. There. DHCD has to approve them. I'm very tired, can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all going to shorten yeah, them. Sorry. We are. Sorry. So do you want me to just follow up? Yeah, that'd be good. Yes. Um, just just by way, way of introduction, I'm a land use attorney. I do a lot of work with housing issues. I'm also a mediator, I'm not doing mediation here. Um, I have worked with the town of Arlington for at least 10 years, and I've been working on this project since 05 with Laura. Um, so I'm thrilled. I've never met with the ARB in all this time, so I'm delighted. Now I should also mention to you that on condo docs, I've never met with with a board, um, and I think it's great that you're interested in it because it's a really important aspect of the implementation of the whole project. Um, 
we've prepared a lot for this meeting, but I'm going to cut to the chase. And if you have questions, and I know Bruce and I talk at length, feel free, obviously, to ask, ask me. But in your, um, in your, the legal framework for all of this is your special permit decision. It's the land disposition agreement in all its various forms. Um, and it's the inclusionary zoning bylaw. And so in your special permit, it provides that 15% of the units in the, in the project is rental now, except for the 12, wow. 176 units in total, 12 of those are condominium. But should there be conversion of additional rental units, 15% of those units need to be available to low and moderate income households that's households earning less than 80% median income. And those units count towards what's called the subsidized housing inventory, meaning the 10% standard. Not sure if you're familiar with 40B. Good, I'm getting yeah, yeah. Good, don't have to go yeah. there. And then 5% of the units have to be available to middle income households who earn under 120% median. In, you might have heard of the expression workforce housing, that's what that's all about. So with respect to the condominium documents, um, the key, two key provisions in your special permit decision. One is the condominium statute provides that the, um, are you all familiar with the very bas the basics of how a condominium is structured? Well, I'm just just, so just everybody yeah, so everybody that. has a unit, and then they have a percentage interest in the entire <coughs> condominium. And typically, that percentage interest, <coughs> that ownership interest, it, well, it's always based. The statute provides on fair market value. Generally, fair market value is calculated based on the percentage interest is calculated based on the square footage of the project. So what happens is that the um, market rate units, um, let, me, let me say this in another way, and I'm tired of sure. Sorry. What we're requiring is, what you're requiring is that the, the percentage interest of the affordable units is based on the restricted sales price, mm -hmm. not the square footage which means that the um, percentage interest of the low moderate income units is going to be slightly less than a market rate unit of the same size. The reason for that is that the fees that you pay are based on okay, your percentage interest. So if you have 15% of the units, just 15% low mod, you always have a minority interest, or you include the moderate income units. 20, at, at most, it's 20% of the units. And the goal, and what your special permit provides, is how do we increase their, the um, role of, and the voting power of the owners of the low mod and the middle income units. And the way we do that is instead of saying um, it's based on your percentage interest, we say one vote per unit. So it equalizes things. Now this is not typically done around the state. However, the condominium statute does not preclude this. There are certain instances <coughs> where um, you have to vote based on percentage interest, but otherwise you can vote one vote per unit. The condominium documents do that, do provide this in a very general way. What they say is that there has to be compliance with the regulatory agreement and the special permit and the LDA. Well, that's a little difficult for a layperson who's purchasing a unit to understand. And frankly, even if the condominium is large enough so they've got legal representation, there's not going to be many lawyers who are going to really sit down and figure out, ah, what does all of this mean? And let me figure out what votes we can do. We have to do one. So the short story is that my recommendation is that we requ request Golston and Stores to spell out those votes that have to be by percentage interest, which they've done to a certain extent, 
and then say all other voting has to be done based on one vote per unit. So I would say that's probably the most important thing I wanted to communicate to you tonight. Um, there are a few other smaller issues that the condominium documents should address because another part of your decision is that we want the units to count towards the subsidized housing mm -hmm. inventory. Well, in order to do that, the units have to comply with what's called the Local Initiative Program Guidelines, state guidelines done by Department of Housing and Community Development. So there's a, there's a few issues that I feel need to be addressed in order to comply with the state requirements and ensuring that the units count. That's my short summary. Good. It's a good summary. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> I understood the summary. <laughs> I can just add that, that Edie and I have had a couple of conversations already about the documents and um, it, I'm adding a few comments for her to take into consideration, but uh, if the board feels it's appropriate, I would suggest that it would be, that we um, designate Edie uh, or vote uh, to authorize her to negotiate with uh, the redevelopers attorneys on uh, the revisions that she uh, things are appropriate to have in the condominium documents so that those goals that she articulated are, are achieved. And, and I think I would add to that that if, if you're willing, I'd like for you to be the liaison from the board in speaking with Edie mm -hmm. on these things. If, if uh, the rest of the board would agree too, you can be our, the, if you need a sounding board from the board, I think Bruce is, is giving his history with the project and his familiarity with the documents and this is overall a good guy thing. Uh, that uh, he'd be the right, the right person for that, not for that. So if you're willing to do it, I'd be glad to. I'd be glad to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Essentially, it's continued. Be nice to get the authority. <laughs> <hard. laughs> so, exactly, exactly. So um, yeah, the rest of us just pick up the phone. Yeah. Uh, but uh, any any other uh, comments or questions on? Carol. I had Carol, just a small yes. one. We were discussing um, some points this morning, and we, we just want to be sure that as we're looking through the condo documents, that we need to be sure that we're not, there's nothing in here that would um, discourage unbundling of parking from the units that's in our in the LDA. And so we just want to make sure that that's, that the uh, condo documents are cons yeah. consistent and, and with that. As I like started to pull through those, there is, for the, um, what's called Unit 2 of the larger condominium, the primary condominium. Unit 2 are the townhouse units, the for sale units. They have an exclusive parking area that belongs to mm -hmm. those townhouses. Um, and Unit 1, the, the large, what I call the flats, and then the other rental townhouses, also have designated parking spaces, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, specific parking spaces that are there for public use for people who are driving up to go to a Vista Park so they can park at the daytime. So, um, but yeah, that's that's sort of the level of, 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 of what you get into when you look at these, just to sort of say, you know, and, and as Evie and I were talking, you know, but just to refresh the memory of the, of, of the board, you know, there's a, a cell phone uh, tower. A, I, tower's not the right word. There's a temporary tower there until the buildings were built, but it's going to be then attached to one of the buildings, presumably building three or building four, um, but that was an area that you and I were discussing today, just for example, where it didn't, the condominium documents that's currently drafted don't get very specific about which building it's going to be situated on. So, you know, there's a host of issues out there to, to look at. Um, mm -hmm. I was generally looking at the affordable housing issues and it was just looking more, more broadly, so I think together we'll have a good uh, checklist. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I guess let's make it official maybe if uh, it might make sense for someone other than Bruce to, to move. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to um, uh, Desi 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 thank you, designate Edie Desi as our uh, representative uh, in the negotiations <laughs> of the condo uh, documents with Bruce and please on to the uh, redevelopment board. So moved. Seconded. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great.
Thanks, Evie. Thanks, Evie. Thanks for waiting around. Thank you for waiting. Thank you. Sorry about that. You know the board's changed by four times. Yes. Yeah. 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 What year was it? 2005 is when I began. I went back to look at my old notes and emails. Mike, can I just add a few sentences about what's happening next with the the agreements with the ACD, the town, and Yeah, please. Timing. Yeah. We've been. We we had signed agreements, and then when the project stopped and the number of units went down, it sort of, we had to do an amendment to that agreement and it sort of opened up some other issues that we're now trying to close down with DHCD. And I think we're very close to that. So there's going to be an amendment to that agreement that you are going to be a signer. And I would say it will be within the next few weeks. And it's very short. That's an amendment to the rent regulatory agreement? Is it? Yes. Okay. Great. And also you're in process of getting approval from DHCD under the local initiative program to ensure that the units count. And, and DHCD is also a signatory to the regulatory agreement. So there's so much state involvement here as well. Yeah. A lot, actually. <laughs> so Bruce will be the, um, the board's liaison to communicate with ED. Yes, okay. and to the extent, you know, additional negotiation Firepower is required. You can step into that too. So. Is there anything other than this amendment that's going to come back to the board that we're supposed to be looking at? Well, the board is supposed to approve the condo docs. Yeah, there has so to we'll be a vote. Was that your we'll understanding of that? There will be something at some point. That's why, we wanted, that's why we wanted to get you to come. Okay. And then, so that's the other thing. What's the other thing? They are have to approve the condo docs. Yes. And when? What's the schedule for that? Okay. Well, it's just, just a, a couple of small issues. That we're asking them to change. That's how we look at it. <laughs> 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 It'll take roughly twice as long as you expect. <laughs> Did you want to say something? I think. Did you want to say something? Um, <laughs> nope. I mean, other than you know, we look forward to, to um, moving through and concluding as quickly as possible. I just I know ed has been very conscientious, and so Laura about trying to facilitate and. I think the board understands the challenge that we have with having condominiums that are on the market and the sales process needs to have these documents going. So while we all want them and these concerns are real and valid and we need to kind of have a balance between the, the voting rights for affordables and also some of the considerations for the higher end larger condominiums that we're trying to sell. So I think there's going to be a balance of things. I'm sure we'll work through those quickly. Um, but we really do have a, a joint incentive to work quickly and nimbly through them. Um, and, and I'm sure we will. Um, because it does affect the marketability. And um, when you're selling something and people ask to see the condominium documents and they're not ready, or the more moving pieces there are to the project in general, the more difficult it is just to convert those sales. So. Um, so we're standing by ready to go, and if there's anything on our side that we need to do to keep pe people on our side focused, um, you know, let me know and, and we look forward to wrapping it up quickly. Great. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for waiting around. Thanks a lot. Okay. Quickly as possible. Uh, Arlington 360 update is the next thing on the list. Jay, finally, uh, yeah. I'll apologize to you now. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I never thought that that would go so long. Okay. So I apologize. Sorry, it just, I, I, I never I got to, I never got to a point where I felt like, if, I felt like if we stopped, we were never going to start again. So uh, uh, right. it was one of those things. Closing instinct of the board. Yeah, it was, it, was, <laughs> it was there. It was there for the taking. So uh, no problem. Um, well, I'm just here to really give. A general update. Um, there's a couple items that we want to touch base with. Um, I will ask for approval of a minor um, change um, that incorporates some design elements for the Vista Park to incorporate some of the, um, the some of the uh, historic elements of the hospital that have been preserved. There's some some relief boss relief plaques that were taken off the original hospital, and we've come up with a design to reincorporate them. We've been trying to find a way to incorporate them into the landscaping, and unfortunately, everything that sort of touched the ground with the
concrete slab that sort of looks like a gravestone with a yeah, cross yeah. on it ends up having the wrong connotations. Um, um, so we um, have a design that we've worked with. I can pass out a six copy. I might have to share a couple of these. Bruce and I can. <laughs> I've made Bruce share more tonight than the other. Sure. <laughs> For sure, it's overrated. <laughs> no, but this is fun. Um, so uh, it's just that this is uh, the upper Vista Park. This is the Hattie Sims Park. It's the name. Um, this is the updated landscaping plan. Um, what you see to the left, where it says Boulder Pile, um, is that's where the parking elements are. Uh, the pulling parking. This is the ring road around the front of the project with the townhomes um, opposite. And uh, where's the boulder pile? It's in Lake. Oh, there it is. It's in Lake. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. um, the path, that's a path that comes into the park from the parking area. And um, we have what we're calling a bas relief shield monument, which is basically a brick structure um, that will have the bas reliefs sort of embedded in the brick. And we will have an historic plate, which we're working with um, the town historian to create help us craft the historic summary of them and he's also looking for an appropriate photograph in the same design motif as the historic plaques that are on the granite post that you've just seen before and we'll be affixing one of those to probably the lower section below one of the units that faces the, the park the, the pathway um, the lower section meaning like the Area. Yeah, so we we'll probably we'll have put the it right underneath it. Oh, under here. Just a description. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the photo and the description will be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Underneath it. And are there four of these? Yes, so there's four of them. Nice okay. symmetry. Okay. Um, there's one here. There's just one. There'll be four on one on each one side. Yeah, on, on, the, on the whole line. What, what was this before? Was this a granite piece? There was nothing there before. Oh, you didn't know. This isn't it. taking the place of this the name of the, the place park. This is just an added feature that we. Are oh, oh, the other one's over here. Yeah, the 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 identity sign, like the name, yeah. the granite slab. And, yeah, and this is and this is what for? Sorry. Yeah, this is just four sides. So here's a three D. To display what? These uh, they're they're twenty four by thirty inch. Um, they've been they're poured concrete molds for. Of We've what seen had those been ones. up on the cornice of the hospital originally. They were peeled off and saved. They're in the town historian's driveway. <laughs> Did you oh. see those ones? You brought us an image of them. Yeah, I remember seeing them. Pieces, and, and one of the pieces of a cornice? Yeah, they were up in the corners of the cornice and embedded in the brick of the original hospital. Up under the eave? Yes. Point medallions almost. Yeah. Yeah. But shaped differently. And they're just poured concrete that are above a cross. It's not a religious form, it's more like a red cross kind of cross. Yeah. Um, and it's just, uh, there's, a, there's some symbolism, but it's more of a historic element. There are very few historic artifacts that were incorporated that were sort of worthy for reconsideration. And I believe the heritage section of our special permit requires that we make a priority to incorporate found uh, historic artifacts in the landscape design. So we've been struggling with this design. Mm. We think this is the simplest and most elegant and um, doesn't have the wrong connotations or possible connotations. Um, so every time you put it on the ground, it Yeah, we tried and putting it. mounds up and leaning yeah. them. We tried sticking them in the flower beds and you know sticking up, but they ended up looking like gravestones. Mm -hmm. What about laying them in a sidewalk paving? Well, they're they trip hazards. Because they they're they're you know, yeah, elevations and things like that. So and they um, could look like toppled over gravestones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why the brick? Is it because the buildings were brick? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's the. Building the existing material. buildings were brick. It would be using the same brick that we're using. Oh, for your same. buildings, but was the original Sims Hospital? Brick? It was brick. It was brick also. Mm -hmm. And what's this top piece going to be? Um, probably a, a um, uh, concrete. Top, which is similar to the toppings of the planters that we have um, in the hardscape of the landscape design of the courtyards. So, Jake, is this the only location I got confused? You said there were four. But there's you're four, four, four that are going around. Each, they're one on each side. Okay. So there's four of the historic elements, and we're putting them in one brick structure. Right. And then 
the top part uh, has the history of the of the we we will have uh, just just underneath it probably on the set base side that faces the pathway okay. we'll have a plaque that I will come back and show you once okay. it's written once the the description is written by the town historian and he's looking for an appropriate um, historic mm -hmm. photograph to show what they had looked like um, that we'd be doing just underneath the front one. Okay. It'd be the same design as the 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 member of the granite post with the design that'll be sprinkled around the top. The difference, 25 years of history. And why down on the bottom? It might be hard to see down there, rather than up above one of them. Um, we could do that. We would just have to make it taller, and it might look a little empty. Okay. Okay. You want it? You want it? Ain't tall. You don't want it tall enough. Too. What's on the top of it? The Maybe yeah, it could it sit on the top. The, the pretense yeah. 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 I'm sitting in there, you won't really say there. Yeah, so all of the, the, the planters in the courtyards have the same brick mounting of the previous. Yeah. You may want to consider moving it up. And okay. maybe these could all move down a little bit. I don't know. So you can put it on the top. Yeah, we, we will. Just because it'll be so we, I, I think it should be centered, whether it's on the top or the bottom. You mm. can kind of. Work yeah, I think the problem with moving it down, out. with moving the bass relief down, Christine, is that it's only going to be on one side, so the other three sides will look pretty odd with the thing not centered in the whole bridge. Yeah, so you sort of the rustification of having a little bit more space at the base, mm. usually. Is. Can, can you use that granite that you nice granite on the top? Um, yeah. And then move the, move the plaque up to the top, just under it, so it's right up underneath. To surrounding you with brick, just move the plaque up. So no, no brick border. No, the top. that whole thing isn't a plaque. That's the the, the concrete mold actually. And the plaque he was just going to put. No, I know, but this is a special concrete mold, right? Right, all four of those are. Just move it up to just under the right. under the concrete top of the uh, granite top, which matches the granite of the other posts and things that you have. Okay. It just looks a little heavy. Yeah. I think if you take one side off it, it'll just look a little nicer. So where would we put the, the plaque, the, the historic garbage underneath it? Or well, I put the plaque on the top, but you could also put it underneath. On the top, laying on the top? Well. It might be hard to read, unless you can bring the whole thing yeah, down because you're those, moving them up. Those don't wear well. Okay, so then put it just below the plaque. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to bend down to look at it. Anyway. Really bend down. But at least it's, a, well, it's higher than it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. Have you included in the budget a, a half a Santa? That will probably have to go on there during the holiday period. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. <laughs> it'd be Don't let it be. Do the legs go yeah, ahead first? You put a if you did just the, it's right. like the chimney you for did. the big cysteine underneath it. <laughs> exactly. That's the next thing you're going to come in with is the is the exhaust pipe in the yeah, middle of this. Get Mike Langell on the fan and face. Just joking. Granite, granite top, plaque, and then the writing below it. Perfect. What about if we do, we center them on the three sides, but then on the one face, we do that on the facing the path. Okay. Or Why not just it, do it on all of them? You do it on one. Yeah, so it doesn't. Yeah. We're, we're only going to have one plaque, though. It's oh, I know. I'm plaque. just saying, this is yeah. one of the area beds. Yep. Just put it right up to the top of the thing as if that was a. How about from the side? How much relief does that thing have? So it's trip hazard. Does it. Trash. An inch, so the the cap should also. Is the cap going to be flush with the brick? The cap would overhang a little bit. Should edge. also overhang then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a chunky thing. If you can make it thinner at the same time, this way. Make more yeah, yeah, it seems yeah. so big. It's chunky. Okay. It's really. Yeah. Okay. You got it. It seems out of scale with even being outside to the city. Yeah, we'll try I to get a little more elegant by making it narrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And drop, bring the thing up to the top mm -hmm. so you're not seeing it surrounded like mm -hmm. a window in a big chunky thing that looks like a mock-up. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it's too bad you couldn't just stick it in the landscape yeah. in nice key spots. No. That's usually works so much better. Such a I understand thing. your yeah. concern then. Yeah. It's, woof. I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's just structurally into one of the garage wall brick walls. Is, they're already built. <laughs> yeah, aren't there's no walls around the park? I was going to ask that where it could be incorporated that's, that's into. That's what it. we had thought, but when we get into the design, or um, tops of walls, even. This is curving around. 
around it. It's not all. Oh, right there, there it's are benches, and there's a fence in it. Benches, yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you know formal planting. So mm. it, it's been a struggle. We've, we've gone through maybe six different concepts. So. Mm -hmm. how, how thick is it? They're they're three inches thick, maybe. Mm. So when you set them in to a mortar bed, it, it can be flush. Yeah. Right. And you've looked at like giving them each their own grounding, like not in the ground, but on something yeah, else. Yeah, they look like On a different stuff. structure. Mm -hmm. No matter what you put them on, they look like gravestones. Yeah, I mean, they're 30 by 24. Yeah. Stick it in the ground, stick them out. Mm -hmm. Lie it in the ground, looks like a tomb. Mm -hmm. Even if you put it on something that was very un gravestone like, like something with color in the base or it looks like something that. a different shape like that a normal yeah, gravestone no, we, base we, would we, be. We've, we've tried it, we've tried it with stone dust, we've tried it with planting that if it's not planting that it, But like raising it on something that uh, is a little bit more unusual. I don't know what. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a lot of explanation if you do that though. I mean it's already a lot of explanation. Plus, if you did that, you'd need a plaque for You'd need four plaques, right? Um, yeah, which, yeah, which isn't really the, the issue. I mean, it's not that if you... You could have one plaque and have four of them You could have one set. of them and do it prominently. You've looked at it. It's either. just if it's leaning. I mean, it just it looks, no matter what, it looks like a gravestone. It looks like a, some kind of grave. I mean, you, if you put four of them on different heights of things in the same landscape area with one plaque. <laughs> Something. Um, it's, I, this, I, this thing is really not pleasant looking. <laughs> at, at the risk of saying something really radical, I know that it was in the special permit, yeah. but are we better are we, off without it? Are we... Wow. We've been struggling to, to try to do it, but is it a force? And um, I hear all the things that you're saying. Yeah. We've, been, we've been trying for that creative idea, yeah. Yeah. but we also yeah. don't want to destroy them, right. or alter them. And it's just a, you can sculpturally do it. You know. It should be mounted in a wall in the base of a parking group, you know, some wall. Just mount it in there and you just find them. Hmm. That's, that's what they should be, on one of the brick walls somewhere. That but the public space, is, they should be in a public space. Well, mm -hmm. uh, well that's all public where you're driving around. And Retaining wall. Oh man, the massive wall. I think it'd be a little Not there. Yeah. That's too. But I'm saying in the Plus brick wall. Well, that, I, I was thinking on the top of that wall, but this is a curb, and then there's you a know, fence. You know, up around the. Yeah, yeah, it's just. I mean, we've, we've talked about that. We've talked about doing that in stairways. No, latest. That would be another place, but those are more private. They're more private. And more managed, and less accessible, yeah. and less seen. And these need to be. And this is historic. Right, so it needs to be. There's a story behind it. Do you, do you need to have, I guess a tripping hazard is a tripping hazard no matter where it is. You've got these two benches here, two benches here, and two benches here, right? You've got these benches. Yeah. That, that that needs to be clear in between the two benches. Mm. There's a thought. I mean, yeah, tripping hazard is only in your pathway, your, your major pathway. If you brought the benches out just a little bit and you just put them down in the ground right, ne right in between in those between two benches. In between them laid. Um, no, I can I, say I, no. I don't. No, no, no. I, I, yeah. it, it goes back to that tombstone. It's just a, it's a tomb. It looks oh, like you think that even looks like a tombstone? It looks like in between two beds. Like where my dog's buried. It's too bad you don't have an image <laughs> of one to show us. You don't have in your file. I mean, I love my dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, you're really <laughs> nice too. And actually, you don't want to dig where the sister is <laughs> for the former dog. No, it was, it was I just bad. don't want to deal with my dog died and I love him. Can we put him in the park? <laughs> I guess I was thinking if it was in between the benches, it would have no, less. Good. It would have less looking like a. a yeah, no, plot, it, maybe, it would look less that way. Um, it still would I be a tripping it hazard, was, whether it's you know technically one or not. Um, you know, in a public park, you're protected for tripping hazards. It's just does it yeah. look better? Does it really accomplish what we're trying to do? Um, it was been, in an arch, right, originally. No, they originally the were the um, in the corners, um, up above the cornice, up in the corners, mm, of, okay. just embedded in the concrete. I mean, in the in the brick facades. Um, and when they 
tore down the buildings. They chipped out the, they chipped them out and mm -hmm. took them off the building. You need to create a fake facade and pull them back into it. <laughs> yeah, can you make it into a, a scale model of the old, uh, of the old Sam's hospital? Sam's hospital? And but it will have, have to be big enough. With the right Sam blast? It'll, yes. <laughs> it'll have to be big enough to, uh, yeah. You could make a gateway into the I, I, I'm kind of with Bruce. I think this is forcing an issue because, yeah, I will I say mean, we are all fatigued with this. But, um, but the town historian, that. you know, thinks this is good and... You know, you want, you know. <laughs> um, I have a great deal of respect for the town. Yeah, right, right, right. I, I will say, but mm. you know, the amateur design person in me doesn't find it very appealing. I mean, it mm. just, to me, it looks. And I, I hear what Andy's saying, you know, make it slender and taper it a little bit, whatever, but we're still trying to you know, pretty up something that's just inherently not very attractive. Maybe if it wasn't in a brick structure like this. No, but I think I'm going with Bruce. I mean, it's just, if you're going to have it, it's just a big block yeah. right in your garden. It's a curiosity. People are going to go, you, what is it? It wants to yeah. be, at, at, you know, built into some entry posts or something. Exactly. Like that. Like a bollard in the entries. Yeah, but right. not, not just sitting out in the middle that of it. One could be in each bollard and one of them has an interpretive but, element right, or something. Let me try one other thing. What if you put them just side by side by side without any brick? 30, 20, 20, 20. They, they look Boom. like little tombstones. No, no. You don't no, make, 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 make the box out of them. I guess it would look a little like a sarcophagus. Well, maybe, what about this? What if we... Pour it into a concrete color. For the dog. I don't know. It's just, Set it into a concrete I don't, color. I don't quite like care, a, but... A narrow, that was, that thin, concrete ugly. color. Like that's ugly. Wouldn't that work better? Yeah. What would? Into a concrete... Pour it into a concrete pillar. Like, set one on each no, side, like you said. Yeah. An obelisk. It'll just... Obelisk. <laughs> At least 18 feet And out. that you could put somewhere in the landscape. And if there's four of them set into a different pillar, they wouldn't look like a tombstone. Because they wouldn't have the shape like a tombstone then. This is in the special permit, right? That's why it's coming No, out. isn't there well, something about special heritage permit in this? Like, is, is that you have to try to, to incorporate some history? Try to incorporate historic found objects into the landscape mm -hmm. Which usually isn't this hard. <laughs> no, I mean, this, this, this is the only thing that was there, so uh, we're trying to make it work. And, um, you know, at times it has felt like we're trying to fit a square so peg in a round hole, yeah. um, which is. You know, rather large square peg as it yeah, turns out. It's pretty, pretty large square. So I don't know. Um, What's your time frame? Um, well, we need to order this. You know, we're we're getting ready for landscaping to be fully mobilized for the parks in September. So we have to buy this. Could it possibly now. wait until September 9th agenda, board members? Um, because uh, if, in the meantime, Jake could potentially provide to the board an electronic um, file of a photograph of the cross, or one of them, and then the board could further consider whether Mike's idea of putting them between the benches in the f these four locations is not out of the realm of, of aesthetic possibility, but also still give a little further consideration to potentially improving the appeal of what you have presented. Mm -hmm. Just to try to, it would postpone the decision a little more, the approval a little bit more. Uh, to be honest with you, just really honest, we, I, we don't have capacity or time for any of this. Re, re, it's like if you want this, let's do it. If you don't, I hate to be so cut and dry, but we have too many things to mm -hmm. do with too much stuff happening to kind of keep this going. Mm -hmm. Just realistically, so you know we want to make the board happy. Um, this is a detail that we want to execute well. We want it to be something that we're all proud of. Um, I, this, this is, we can come back after we're done <laughs> and say we'll try to do this later. Um, but, you know, in the construction sequence with, with installing, landing, planting, and you know, building foundations and putting footings in and all that stuff, the time to do that is in the sequence with when we're doing everything. And unfortunately, this has lagged behind. We've been struggling with this. We've had many different iterations of this. Um, and 
we're here, but we need to make a decision. And we're happy to incorporate the changes that Andy has said. Um, but I can't look at I can't can't design seven more of these things and get the town historian to agree with which ones he likes best and execute everything else we have to do. Can it be delayed? Yeah, but we're going to build this then afterwards, so we're going to rip it up our dig a foundation, put this up like the casting, so, you know, it's just, you know, the irrigation lines are all going to be in, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to have finished plantings that all have to be planted in a certain time frame um, from a seasonal perspective, and it's just, it's just, we just need to simplify and narrow <laughs> what we're doing and move forward. And, yeah. and unfortunately, there's urgency that we have. I'm trying to be respectful to the board, but we actually like that. We just got to make a call. It'd be easier if we had a picture of what it looked like, but well, we can kind of picture it into this. No, the, the boss the, relief. The boss relief. No, my, I have one on my phone. My phone is dead. <laughs> 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 So, so really, September 9th, you can't, you can't wait for that on an up and down on Andy's thing. I guess, I guess two things come to mind. I, I, I truly, I must admit, I'm ambivalent towards this either way. I, I don't think it necessarily adds anything. Um, I mean, it's nice that, you know, maybe, maybe it's nice that we wanted to save those things. Uh, but in the end, I'm not sure it really. What can we convince the historian to hold off on? Well, I think I think I think if we, but so we do we have to convince the historian? I don't know. No, we, we, can, do do a we can do what we yeah. want. He's been helpful. And and then just put the how heartbroken would he be? Yeah. I guess is the question. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, I don't. I would oh, I'd hate oh. to lose them, but maybe there's a better place for them than this. If we had to vote on this, I would vote now. Yeah, and <laughs> that's a pretty easy vote. I, <laughs> I, 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 you know, yeah. I, I'm very sensitive, Jake, to how much work you put into this, and yeah. it is, I think, a little detail, and you've been dealing yeah. with like. Major Big major details. factors, yeah, this is, and yeah. and this is you know I don't want to jump over over this. Yeah. Personally, it's not working for me, and I think it actually detracts from what I understand of this department to look like. So I would say no, and I don't. My own personal view is I think that we could the the, the project's going to succeed without this fine, and it doesn't. It doesn't really sing out like it has that great amount of historical relevance to me. I'm not going to look at that and go, oh yeah, that was the piece of the hospital that used to be here. So, I agree. How, how does the historian feel about the pieces? Well, he thinks Either. it's the one architectural piece from the buildings. Uh, it's sort of the, the physical legacy from what was there to what it is now. Um, I think he feels really good about you know the conscientiousness of Mm -hmm. you know, the, the historic plaques that we are doing uh, on the site. Um, mm -hmm. And he's he's seen, you know, a few of the other designs that, that didn't get this far. <laughs> 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 this far, this far. <laughs> yeah. let, me, let, let me ask you one last question on this thing, and I'm, I'm only bringing it up. Are they all the same? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, another idea to try to make it more elegant would be just to have a two-sided. Yeah, and have yeah. it narrower. I mean, yeah, um, and that would just be a little bit more elegant. I mean, I, I, I and maybe you understand walk aesthetically. You see it from both directions. It's, it's perpendicular. And you have, to the you have a perpendicular, you have one on each side, and a plaque maybe. And it'll feel more like your other plaques, <laughs> which are vertical. You've got to go redesign this thing. Now you're redesigning again. I, I, I'm with group. I would eliminate it. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I like that suggestion. Yeah. I, I, I kind of feel like the historian that it's part of that site and it's. But then the someone one has thing to that you design have. it, Christine. Nice we need there. a designer to go in and execute it. Is your landscape architect designer? Or is it? Yeah, so I mean, if the board wants to go in that direction and wants to authorize someone to be able to approve it so we can get this done this week, that would be the way to do it. And if the board is not.
not happy with it and doesn't feel like a strong sense of, hey, we're going to be really proud of this and this is accomplishing what we wanted for Vista Park to be, you know, I think it's the board. So what I can say is that we've really worked on this for a long time and tried to, you know, get to a different scenario. So this is sort of the best idea that we've had to make it more elegant that would be accomplished if we did a two-sided and narrower structure with a thinner cap. Um, that might be more elegant, although I'm not sure that that might still dominate, you know, the nice engraved granite name <laughs> that we have, um, you know, right at the entryway. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I that's mean, what I don't like about it. There's yeah. enough stuff. There's yeah. enough stuff. We have the posts and we have... You got the posts and you got lot. that. And this is just randomly placed in there. It's just, it's it wouldn't have to be here if you did it two-sided. You could put it somewhere else. See, and I guess that's what I would... You could put it in the landscape. What it, it remind me what your other signs are like, what they're mounted on. Just a, it's just a, a six inch granite post. Just six inch, it's okay. Very it's elegant. very narrow. And then there's Stand one that's steel, uh, I was thinking it was wider. And then there's one that's a rough block down here with a plaque in it. Yeah, it's engraved. They're all kind of natural and part of like a mm -hmm. uh, nice aesthetic and, and this is just coming out of like somebody you bought it somewhere. It just seems forced. Yeah. So where else can these go? I, I don't know. I don't know. I just mean, kind of have some. You have two choices. <laughs> yeah. We either assign somebody to work with them to reduce it and keep it where it is, or we vote to eliminate it. And see if the historian can find another place for it. Well, we can donate them to the museum. And, you know, he has them in his driveway. <laughs> they look great in his driveway. <laughs> but he has a wall to move them up again you know, in that area. So, um, or, or it would force a delay in this thing if you really wanted to come back and get them somewhere. But I don't think this works. Really I, I don't. I don't think that's worthy of being the first thing you see coming into the Vista Park, even two side. I don't see it. I mean, you got this nice entryway here. But that's what I was saying. It could. Be, it could be somewhere else. You know, it could be here, two sided, or somewhere else in the landscape instead of right along the entry in the grass, maybe. If it were kind of mixed in and it was two sided, it might yeah, you had a, yeah. not be so dominant. This is really dominant. Maybe two sided right. between <laughs> these benches right here yeah. or something. Yeah. It looks like or, or, or right here in the landscape yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Like, it's got there a cross here. On, so it literally looks like it. I was just thinking, you know, I tried to draw what Jake was saying. If you put it in the ground, just tilt it up. It looks like a little. Oh, yeah. Right. We had four of them lined we up. Don't it looked do like that. a whole. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. But I could see this it in that. This is where birth happened. This is the birth thing in here <laughs> That's the kind of scale you want. Is get it down on the ground, like you're saying. Get it down low. Don't make a big block out of it. And even between these benches here, it's a trip hazard. Well, it would look like that. Is the problem. Yeah, yeah. Because the cross sticks out yeah, an inch. It looks like a vulture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then. Which is what you have with gravestones like that is when you have them flat, and you have the radiation <coughs> acid from the rain sort of sits on things, and it, 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 it concrete is very porous, mm -hmm. so you get expansion and contraction. So they, that's why you don't it'll, it'll crack. It'll absorb water and freeze and crack. It's lying flat. Then it'll really look historic. Yeah. Some moss will grow <laughs> on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I should eliminate it. I don't think it's adding to it's subtracting. I can go with that. We can eliminate it. I don't think we have to vote because the vote would be to include it, not to exclude it. Because no, you could reject it. You could reject this concept. Say so you don't like it. Okay. Yeah, consider it rejected. <laughs> yes, yeah, consider it rejected. We're not going to vote on it. Okay. Sorry. Right. Okay. We're not going to vote on that. You know, I, I'll, I'll try to hold your it out. Sorry, <laughs> I know. Did you just stand there holding? We, we, in all honesty, in all due respect to the to the town of Scoring, because he no, does he's yeoman's work. He's so right. He does especially it. on this yeah, project. It's just he did part is in the right place. Right. It's, oh. it's a nice idea, but it just detracts from the park. Did our town history now? We got something good. No, I don't want. To, I'm not trying to throw him under the. He, he was working with us, trying to come up. Yeah, it's hard to. Yeah, how do you display four things in one space? Kiosk. Oh, and this is what happened then. And then, so this is what we designed. Um, yeah. And he said, well, no, that's what I asked for. Mm -hmm. Looks okay to me. That's museum historic. He may be relieved not to use it. I don't know. Yeah. He might, you know, it might be better to have some of these um, in the park. 
Uh, but you know what we will do is we'll keep an open mind for where we could put these yes. things. And yeah. All of a sudden it comes to us, you know, and we can, yeah. do, we, can, we can pop them in. Do keep an open mind of like you know just using even one, not yeah. using all four, just yeah. one maybe in between two yeah. benches. You know, let's get a friend's build the best apart, and let's see if we can make it work. And Send us the image though, so okay. we can also help well, you. Well, too nice. Too nice to put that in. We can try to help you think too. Okay. Right? Okay. If he sends us the image, okay. What else you got? Oh, we yeah, can okay. also have it in so the background. We're, we're going to move on um, as we move forward. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, one direction I have was to give you an update on the forest management plan. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. So as you recall, that was there was an LDA requirement so that said that had to be done by July of last year, um, which it was a couple months behind that schedule, um, but it's been done for over a year now. Um, and we've circulated it to the Land Trust and Concom for any amendments to the plans. And there was some dissatisfaction with some of the details of the forest management plan, and members of Concom have met with um, an emerging friends group to help truth, as you recall, to govern the open space, and it's a, it's a collection of people from different backgrounds, but including the neighborhood. And there seems to be a disagreement amongst the other parties as to what actually to modify in the forest management plan. So we've been saying to CONCOM, you know, this is your, this is, this affects the management principles that are down the road that are not necessarily things that we that, that we've created these endowments to help support financially the, the transfer the ongoing transformation and maintenance of this um, of the open space there's priorities there's maintenance standards as you know from the, um, um, the management plan that also draw on those principles and there's just it seems to be a disagreement that I don't necessarily totally understand between members of the land trust, the CONCOM, and the new friends group. I think it has more to do with voting and who has control over what decisions. Um, mm -hmm. And so the, the, the amendments, there was a little, what was the word that was being used? Uh, it was a one-pager that was modifying the forest management plan. Just a doesn't, a coda, a coda that um, has been drafted but not officially endorsed, and um, we've been waiting for CONCOM to sort of sign off on this and the land trust to sign off on it, and we keep asking them to do it, and there's September an ongoing 5th, debate, and, right? and they're not meeting again until September, so um, this is one of those things where it doesn't really necessarily affect us directly. We want to do the right thing and keeping these things done. We have a clear obligation in the LDA to have this completed. Um, we've circulated a draft of it, um, you know, on one hand, we would like to complete it, so we are thinking rather than you know, let's take draft off of this and ask the forest management, uh, the person who drafted it, who was recommended by these parties, <laughs> to do it, to just say, give us what you got, and if there's some amendments or people want to change it later, um, we'll leave that to the future groups to, to decide. You know, so there's part of us that wants to do that, but then part of us wants to make everybody happy and have them give us whatever changes that are necessary so that the board can vote on it. So. Is it your understanding that that the plan is now finished? Because that's my understanding, that it's finished and it's gone, or it's on its way to the CONCOM, and they will be voting on it at their September 5th meeting. Um, that that's it has my understanding. With all the However, I don't believe that there is a clear consensus to whether it will be approved or whether it will be approved in the context of the other elements of voting rights. Of, you know, I think it comes down to the neighborhood feeling like they want to have a say in the management. Mm -hmm. And there are folks that don't necessarily agree with that. And so it's really... Right, just the, the neighborhood is the general public, together. basically. Yeah, so we want to facilitate that. We want to bring people together. We want everybody to have clear definition of the mechanics of how this is going to be managed. We think that the management plan in the conservation documents sort of really outline how that's going to work. Um, and I, if you read, I think there also may be some anxiety because 
people haven't seen the final landscaping in place and they don't see how the open space is being finalized and they see the shelter portion of the project with the exposed you know there's just you know is it done it doesn't feel done you know we sign off on it wait this is our last chance to sort of have a say in changing things if we need it it sort of feels a little bit like that i don't know if it's just anxiety i don't know if it's psychological but we've been asking and asking and asking and we keep being told yeah we'll you know by the next day or be meeting we'll have it's finalized by the next day or be meeting will be finalized so you know this is just one of those things that's um it's not rocket science it's not a big issue it's just kind of getting it closed out is, is uh taking a long time. We would like to have this done because it is the piece of the CR documents and when we're selling units, these are again, people are asking for the condo docs, they're asking for all the, you know, all these regulatory documents just to understand what they're buying into. Um, they see forest management plan, it's like one of the little detail things that we just don't have that's not helpful from our perspective to keep it as a, oh well wait, it's gonna, if there's a new thing but it's coming and, you know, <laughs> let's sign the PNS. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's just another mm. challenge. So um, that's the update. We're working on it. Okay, and you're keeping communication with Carol so that if the board can help in, a, in yeah. any way, or or you know, I'm happy to to step up on that one. And yeah, and the only thing uh, I can think of that might help through the decision control. making process is to maybe invite at a particular date, you know, someone to or just request that they finalize. I don't know. Yeah, okay. I don't know if they have okay, coming well, from the board well, can itself. We say, can we say that our expectation, the board's expectation, Christine, at this point, since, since you've got your ear closer to the ground than any of us on this one, is that there will be a vote on September 5th, which would be tight. What is September 5th? That's a, that's a Thursday? Yeah, that's yeah. a Thursday. Before our, our September 9th meeting. Yeah, the problem is our agenda. Maybe we could make we it an it agenda, agenda item. We'll make it an agenda item, yeah. but mm -hmm. you know, with uh, maybe near the end of the meeting, so that way, if we, um, we have to drop it, if we have to drop it, it'll it'll we'll be at the end. So that would be sorry, good. Jake. That means it's at the end of the meeting again. So. Um, can the board <coughs> designate someone to accept it? To accept, accept the more the. Forest management plan. At that meeting or before that meeting? Just be empowered to finalize and accept. Well, I think that's not something we do right now. I think we would do it at the September 9th meeting. Let's let's cross that bridge at the September 9th meeting if we're not in a position on September. I mean, if, if you're waiting until September 5th anyway. And I can. Just trying to sell units. I, I yeah. but look, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm I know, I know. the biggest, I but, uh, no, I know. but if, if you had said the difference is, you know, August 22nd and September 9th, I, I guess I would, I would, we, I would think about it, but it's not, it's September 5th to September 9th. Is what or is, I guess what I'm saying, is there a way to accept the forest management plan of what's been drafted and then have them a way to, to quickly do whatever amendment people want to do? And if the content has a change to it. You know, they want to adapt the coda or because then at least something's done. We've met our obligations for the LDA. We, we just want everybody to have a decision. Okay, I should know more than I do on this. So what's the interaction between the LDA and the forest management plan? And who has the okay on the forest management plan? I guess, I guess I, I'm, I'm coming from a lack of knowledge on this that I should have, I realize, but I don't. What's what's the the land trust is a, is um, has a role in it? A signatory? Well, well, they so let me back and say that. So basically, the management plan for the conservation, the permanent conservation yeah. restriction, mm -hmm. yeah, goes to a tri-party agreement between the condominium association, the land trust, and the con con. Okay. And so, but that's while the management plan is signed, it is not, doesn't go into effect until the permanent conservation restriction is placed Comes on the in property, place. Yep. which happens after, after the project. And right. one of our challenges is that the shelter is not done and some of their land is incorporated mm -hmm. right. in that, so we have to wait for them to be done from a timing perspective. Um, so this is 
kind of, it's a, I, I would characterize this, and others may not, but I would characterize it as it's an ARB jurisdiction, but that there's a courtesy because these other groups will be engaged in the management of it later. So there's sort of a courtesy that we would have them all understand what the forest management plan is so that the parties are involved. Um, the, the neighborhood groups have said, well, we should have a, a, a say in this management. And um, I think there are some elements that some people agree with that and others don't. And um, I think that's where the disagreement is. But, but the way that it's set up now. Cannot, there saying, was a disagreement on what the forest management plan was for a while also, how it right, was written. Right, how it was people written. weren't happy with what had transpired, how it, how, how it had been written, and it was being rewritten. But the of types of changes, how would you describe the types of changes? It was identifying preferential species of trees. There were some technical things. It was mostly technical stuff. Yeah. About how the land yeah. would be so, managed. And so it gets like it gets approved by us, and it's been rewritten by different parts. No, of I'm just trying to figure triangle. out what the so so we approve it as 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 exhibit to the LDA. The and but we're not a signatory to it because that's being signed by the Conservation Commission, my trust, and the it's developer. It's for the future management of the land. Yeah, okay. It really happens when the project is over and we've signed the CR documents and all of the open spaces are turned over to this tri-party management. Which is Christy. why the tri-party should have the biggest role in it, because mm -hmm. they're the ones that have to live with it. And I don't want to get in a jurisdictional mm -hmm. with CONCOM or the land trust. I think, well, wait, it's our decision because we're going to be managing this. But it's really your permit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why don't we, we review it, Christine, and we recommend that they sign it? Y yeah, and then we can only do what we can do at that. I mean, if we approve it, we even could before review they it and it. Uh, approve it based on conditions that would come from we, we, yeah, we the CONCOM and the ALC. We but then we're we well, no, because we because we're not we're only approving yeah. it at a point in time. Yeah, we're. I mean, after that happens, we don't have anything else to do with it. I don't think we we see no problem yeah, with it. We see it complies. Yeah. it complies with what we expect. You, it, you're, it's ready for you to sign. Yeah, and if you choose to change it after we've approved it, then that's on you, I think. What am I or, Well, if they have an amendment, we also need to approve the amendment. So in yeah, other words, if they want to add for, a condition for, or change for, something. For all time? Well, it's still part of the special permit, right? Until so the management program. I mean, we if we sign off and we say, yes, we're happy with the management plan, go sign it. Right. And they sign it, and six months later, someone says, "Okay, I want to amend that." And um, here's how we want to amend it. Do they come back here for us to so reapprove it? Boy, that no. doesn't sound like a good plan. Well, just until it becomes the permanent. No. Oh, really? Until it gets merged into the CR. That's what I would think. Once it gets merged into the CR, it's out of our hands, wouldn't it be? Yeah. I think so. I mean, just for this time period, until it's sense. until it's in the CR. So if six months from now, if it's not. So what are we Permanent yet? It? Yeah, they would have so to come back to us. We think this is approvable. We want you to sign it. They don't, they don't sign it though. You, well, you they guys don't. accept. You guys just accept it. Okay. Nobody right. signs it. Nobody, yeah, nobody signs, signs it. it. There's no signature. It's just a plan. Yeah. There's so, no signature. All right, so we, we accept, but the yeah, comment. But if there's amendments to it, I think the board yeah. should consider but, that. If and maybe your criteria is that the three parties that will be the future management have to agree that those 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 amendments are good amendments. Mm -hmm. Okay. You so know, I don't think anyone has any any debate about what technically is a good thing to add or not. I don't well, think the concom might have some. But the concom might. They, and we need to listen to that. So, <laughs> That's why they're so reviewing like for, it. So for us as developer, we're like, well, as long as concom's happy, we're happy. This is future stuff. That's all going to make good ecological sense. And, and members of the concom took a hand in writing it yeah. along with members of the ALT. So but but the CONCOM works as a board so that one member can't say okay it's approved right. by the CONCOM. Right, right, right. Well, so they have a designated one person. Yeah, so yeah. that's I mean what, what, so we, it has been hanging I think we're a little bit lost is the wrong word. But I, I think we need to get our ducks in a row and, and have a plan for the next meeting. I I'm, I don't think that we can have that plan for right now. And I think with the September fifth vote coming up 
I mean, we don't even have a forest management plan. I don't plan. have the plan. I have an old draft, two, but two there's a new draft. So it's it's a code of that. They can, we can send you the code of that from, from Concord. Okay. But you have to I mean, that's the same plan. Well, no. I actually spoke with Brian yeah. and Kathy this morning. Okay. We were out at your site okay. looking at the marketing trailer. Yep. Site. And that's going to come up later, I think, at another meeting. I sent you a note. <coughs> we'll bring that up later. But um, they both said that it's being finished today and and being sent to the CONCOM. Okay. I believe that was, and that the CONCOM was going to be reviewing it and taking a vote on the 5th. Okay. And I asked them to send it to me also, so I think I did. Okay. Yeah. So I can review that as mm -hmm. soon as I get it. Yeah. And at the next, yeah. we can put it on the agenda for the next I meeting. I think we put it on the agenda. I, I also would ask that whatever it. is going to the CONCOM on the 5th get sent to us in our Wednesday packet that week so that we can, <coughs> whether or not they approve it, disapprove it, at least we'll have something in our package to um, to look at. So we can ask be Brian ready to send it to on us Monday. Monday. Yeah. I'll just ask him to get you to get me for you the Yeah, let's just put it on the agenda. And it's gonna be the draft plan, it's gonna be the final plan unless they get their endorsement together. It just gives them a deadline. Right. Yeah. yeah. I see what you're yeah. saying. They've told you every yeah. week that they have it. Yeah. So so that's I think but that's why I was saying I don't think we're gonna be able to do anything tonight. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. what we can do is we can prepare for the next one. Yep. Okay. And, and give them their that, that deadline. Yeah. So we're gonna something to yeah. Yeah. We're, we're gonna submit it and you guys are going to review it, but you know, yeah. for the most part, you're probably going to accept it unless they have their code or whatever right. modifications you're going to have in. Mm -hmm. and we'll so whatever it is that they're going to take a look at, and, and with amendments and everything else, that's what we'd like to see uh, that that week, uh, so, yeah. so the Wednesday before their meeting on the fifth. Right. Good enough. Right. Okay. You know what? Things to keep moving along. No, we, we really do. I yeah, mean, I know there's a lot of things I, yeah, that we're yeah. looking at. We're on the pleasure mode here. But we want to keep things moving yeah, along. We're, we're with you. It's well, just, yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Um, okay. And then, you know, just again on the condominium documents. Mm -hmm. Very valid points that were raised about the voting. Yeah. There's different perspectives that we should, you know, we'll have to bridge and balance. And yeah. we, will, we will do that. But um, just to keep that in mind, it's not. Just the four lean, it's, there's, there's a balance. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. we'll go through that. Um, okay, well, um, are there any questions from a schedule perspective? Um, yeah, um, how are things moving on? Sales? Uh, um, it's been challenging. The, we're going through a process with the temporary certificate of occupancy process with the, uh, for safety and you know access on the site for the public with the building inspector and the building department. and. Um, have been told that not to show or arrange for buyers to come in and look at their units, and that's very difficult because mm -hmm. people just aren't committing to PNSs unless they walk into the units and really see them. So we are working on that. We understand the building department's concerns about safety. Um, I think a lot of that will be allayed with the first TCFO because there's a whole access and fencing off of delineation between the construction side and sort of the open side. Um, things are coming together. The power lines are going down. Or, or, you know, the, the, we're hoping to remove the power lines in the next week or so. The um, cell tower is supposed to be done in offsite by the end of the month. Wow. Um, there's been a lot of cleanup of the road. The sidewalks are now in. The signage down at the bottom of the road are coming along. Mm -hmm. um, some of we've delineated the fencing around the shelter site, so it's migrated to be just on their side of, Hoss, of um, Sims Road. And some of the construction fencing that's along that edge, we're taking down and beginning the replanting um, with the buffer zone enhancement planting plan and kind of executing that and really cleaning that up. And then we're delineating um, the upper portion, portion of the construction site to the left of our hospital road, uh, Sims Road now and Sims Circle coming out of the left hand side will be delineated from the, that point to where the turnaround is at the top of the site, mm -hmm. and that will become a construction zone. And then um, the landscaping will be coming around the front of the buildings and, and clean up those the front town homes. So, you know, it's all it's all it's all coming together. It's fits and starts. It's construction. But are the two it. parks graded and 
getting ready to receive. Yeah, as soon as the power lines are down, we're going to be trying to remove the site construction office at the upper vista, at the lower vista part. Oh, it's still there. Okay. And so that's the final sort of grading that happens. And then once the poles are down, um, we will use that site as staging for construction initially. The lower vista part? The lower vista part will be the last landscaping at the back out of the site because okay. we have nowhere else to put anything. Mm -hmm. We should have to put the space on the other side of it. So, um, but we're expecting to be done with that by the end of October. So, so everything will be planned it's, this year. It's pretty dynamic up there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, again, encourage people to come look yeah. at it because you understand it more when you see it. Um, we also are taking down the, um, the mock-ups. We've taken pictures of them to document, but we're removing them as just to prepare for the landscaping. But the the, the, the sidewalk is and the curbs are now in gives definition. Um, the we've begun the, the the final fencing along the Vista Circle side of the site, uh, going out to Woodside Lane, and we'll begin soon the back section um, as soon as we get some of the grading done when the cell tower comes down. Mm -hmm. So. It's all starting to transform much more every day into a more of a finished um, look and experience on the exterior. Um, you know, the, the townhomes that are for sale, um, you know, once those garage doors go up, I think it's really going to change. I think that's supposed to be happening. If it hasn't happened already this week, it's supposed to be this week. And um, you know, landscaping in front of those townhomes is really coming together with the street lights are being installed. And really, the activation of the power is happening. So, um, so yeah, you know, a lot of things are happening. Um, we had a pipe burst at three o'clock this morning that drowned 12 units of Ooh. finished units that are already punched, punched out. So, you know, you know, you, just, you you get back up and you you fix the problem. Oh, and boy, you know, the sprinkler the sprinklers burst. So, you know, it's. It's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but um, the pool deck is coming together, the entry plaza sequence is really shaping up nicely. Um, um, the lobby was done, I think it did get damaged a little bit, the, where the leasing office is. Um, so you really get a sense of the finish, you know, the, of the tile work and the interior the finishes and things like that. So, uh, and the units, you know, look good. And boy, the views look really good. Look good on a nice day. Today. So, so can we come up at any time or we should schedule it with Just you? schedule it with me. Thursdays are the best um, from a logistics perspective. Um, but uh, Fridays work. Um, Mondays are also good. Uh, but you know, any times it works, I know it's usually going to be either early in the morning or later because everybody has their thing to be done. Mm -hmm. And um, Andrew would enjoy giving you a first door. Absolutely. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. How, how about the assisted living? How far are they? They are picking up speed. Um, they had roof trusses delivered. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are topping out quickly. And what's their schedule for completion? Uh, they okay. should be end of February. Yeah, yeah. Still, still February. Yeah. So we're going to still be looking at probably more of a spring planting. Um, so their slope stabilization won't happen until this spring. Whatever they're going to do on that back roof traps. So. Yes, which I know is a yeah, that's one of the issues some, we want to talk about again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, like I said to Brian, um, I know that there's anxiety about that. Um, there's a plan that was approved that's the standard that we all are expected to be held to. The plan that was approved for the roof slope? Uh, just overall. But for the yes, landscape. Including the, all of the landscaping. Except for uh, that slope, we had questions on about that pocket planting of the vines that was going to happen. Well, and they never came back with a resolution. I believe that's the way we left it. I certainly had questions about. Let's check. Let's their check detail. because I yeah. think I think that shelter view is that there's a landscape plan that was approved, and they have to do it. There's a detail with that probably is not going to work. I think because I think exactly. That, I think the depth of the the riprap is deeper than they had anticipated. Oh, even deeper than what was on the drawing. Yes. So I think that that needs to be addressed. Um, what what we'd like to see is the same blown mulched blanket with seating that they're doing on the upper mm -hmm. slope that I think I described once to everybody. That way the rock would be covered with a layer of right. natural material and mm -hmm. So what I will do, ground. what I have been doing with shelter is saying, you know, I think we need to address this and need to look at that detail. I think they're... Do we need to call them back to look at that? 
Um, we can, we you can know, do let's, that. Let's, let's see what happens in the next month, but I think they've, they've been very focused in the tight coordination. It's a very difficult site for them to build on, and the coordination with getting our utilities up hospital road was keeping the upper site accessible with them needing to have drill mm -hmm. to, deliveries and they've also had a couple instances where the trucks have had to go up and turn around and they can't turn around and go over the curb and smash them. Oh, it's boy. been dynamic. It's been yeah. dynamic and we've coordinated we get through it and we'll get it done. But um, And it's not until spring that that's happening. And but. it's next spring. But the sooner that it gets delineated the better. And I know that CONCOM has is looking at that and tracking that. And the, it will be changing from what it looks like now. Yeah, and I'm also so let's keep about it as an yeah. issue, but I think at 11 o'clock, I think we're yeah. pretty yeah. much... I think once they see the other stuff in, too, I think they're going to... Yeah, out of gas. I agree. Out of gas. I'm out of gas. So I think uh, we'll take we a... We still have two more things motion on. Motion to... Uh, <laughs> sorry, we do have two more things, and I think we will postpone both of them until the next meeting. Thank you. Motion yeah. to adjourn. Go ahead, Andrew. You can second it. There you go. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.